Welcome back to the Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic, the 2014 edition. My name is Drew Banks, alongside Elias Biet of NorthPoleHoops.com. We're joining a game in progress, the first semifinal. St. Edmund Campion in, in the blue jerseys, taking on Thorn Lee in the white jerseys. And Elias, so far, what are your takes on this game? Well, I mean, Thorn Lee's been been aggressive attacking the hoop. They're not settling for any jumpers. Uh, Campion's are really trying to get out in transition and use their speed. Um, you know, this this is going to be a game of possessions here. They got to play. Thorn Lee's got to play like they played their very first game of the tournament. You know, under control, look for good shots, and and really take advantage of their perimeter game. And there you have a shot by Surendran right there. He gets it to go. Bennett on the right side. The score is 29-19, Thorne Lee. Shane James, coach, really excited right now for his team, urging them on to play defense. Here's Bennett, goes left, cut, cut off by Prasad. Over to Anderson, looks inside, fakes, up top. Dalen Lee can't get it to go, and a rebound for DeAndre Austin. Thorne Lee pushes it up, McIntosh. Called on a travel there. No good as he takes steps. And we'll just go over the players on the floor right now for Thorne Lee. Number 30, Niroshan Surendra. And number 15, Brandon Prasad. Number 21, Kyle Goodwin. Number 22, Drashir Mack. And number 23, DeAndre Austin for Campion. It's DJ CJ Bennett, number 13, with the rock right now. 24, Dylan Gregory. Number 10, Marcus Anderson. Number 14, Dalen Lee. And number 11, and number Joel 11. Brown. There you go, Joel Brown. I was looking for him. Now, Joel's a guy who's, uh, who's really stepped up for this team. One of the standout performers here for the underclassmen. Um, another ninth grader that, that has come out and really made an impact for Campion. That's the 2019 class, correct? 2019, that's and right. And there's a bunch of studs, as we saw last evening as well. Uh, Andrew Nebhard as well in that class. Rowan Barrett Jr., as we mentioned yesterday on the webcast. Here we got DeAndre Austin kicking out to Brandon. And no Prasad good. can't get it to go. And there it is. Surendran puts it back in and one. Guys, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Ref, what did he do? What did he do? White 23. That's DeAndre Austin with a technical foul, 31-21 is the score. Now th these refs are, this is, a, this is a high level tournament. These refs are absolutely killing the rhythm in this game. They're yeah, I don't understand why they're so ticky tacky on every little thing. Let the guys play. I mean, you, you put a hand on a guy, you, you touch his arm here and, and they're calling a foul or a guy yelled and one, part of the part of the energy, part of the momentum, and you know he gets called on a technical. I've never heard that before, getting a technical for yelling and one. Come on, referees, we're on your side usually, but you gotta clean that up as well. Just you know, we want a smooth game. You know, let the players play. They're young kids. They're having fun. Don't take the fun out of the game. And to be honest with you, I don't mind the physicality of it at all either. The guy's just trying to establish position. The guy's trying to box out. Of course, you're gonna have to be physical. It's part of the game. Exactly. Here's Anderson on the right wing. And here we go again with this bogus foul. Another whistle. Another whistle. The flow, there's no flow to the game right now. The referees have decided that they want to be the story. And we'll see how this game shapes up for the rest of it. And at the line right now, number 14, Dalen Lee for St. Edmund Campion. Facing a nine point deficit, 31-22. Already been 18 fouls called in this game. We'll see how it shapes out for the rest of it. And Lee. Well, we'd like to see some physicality on the floor out there. As I uh, make a quick note to the ref, the referee is telling me we're not changing anything. <laughs> so you can tell they're in full control right now. Well, to me, there, no, there needs not to be because it hasn't even been a physical game. They're, they're looking for the wrong kind of exposure, these, the stripes. All right, here we go. Let's get back into the action. McIntosh hands it off. Surendran over to Prasad. Back to Surendran on the left side. 
Thornley going right to left on your screen. Spins, pivots, no good. And Brown with the rebound, goes left side, left hand dribble, kicks it outside, Lee. Lee can't get it to drop, big rebound by McIntosh. One of the smallest players on the floor, 5'11 guard, and he picks up that rebound. Five for Prasad, he's cut off by Brown. And Austin up top, quite the physical specimen he is, is Austin. Great defense by Anderson, and we mentioned yesterday the long arms, such a wiry point guard is Marcus Anderson. Yeah, he's a problem on defense because he, you know, he's he's able to guard the, the real little guys, and then he'll guard up to 6'4", six, 6'5", six, on the other end, so. And here's Austin on the turn, on the curl. Prasad kicks it, left side. Now this Back is something, something you really got to like about Thornley is that they've been really patient with their possessions. Find that they have a nine point lead, not rushing anything. That's the thing, you're in control. When you're up nine, semi-final game, you don't want to make mistakes. You want to minimize opportunities for Campion to go on a run, and that's what they're looking to do right now. All right, inbounds, it's number 22, McIntosh gets it into Austin. He's defended by Lee, another long, wiry player. Kicks it to the right. Prasad up top, and he takes it from Goodwin. Prasad through the legs, nice little move. Goes for it, and doesn't get it to drop, but he's gonna go to the cherry sprite, Elias. No, the ref called it on the ground. <laughs> oh boy, How about okay. that? Oh, we got one ref calling it on the ground, and the other ref calling for two, so. Yes, he will go to the There line. you go. And you know, we don't mean to get on the referees, we just want to see a, a, a game, you know, that's flowing, that's all. I do. <laughs> These guys kill me. Hey, take it easy on them. Lee on the other way, and he gets it to go. And that's crucial, a missed free throw on the bonus, and then Campion comes right back to get the score. McIntosh up top, guarded by Anderson. Well, he's got to watch out for the five second count. Austin up top. Defended by Devontae Daniels, who's in the ball game now for Edmund Campion. School out of Branton versus a school out of Thornhill. And Gregory up top again switches and takes on Austin. Persaud's got it. Defended by Lee. He's got the left. He takes it left. Oh, and he gets tipped. Push forward. Anderson, Daniels, and he gets it to go with the scoop. Underhand scoop on the left side of the basket. 31-27, Thornley's lead cut to four. See, and it, it's, Campion gets called for the foul. Looks like Joel Brown, number 11. Now, Drew, it's for that reason exactly what we saw from Thornley there on that last possession, why I don't like teams that, that hold on to it with a whole minute to play. I mean, you can get three, four possessions out of that. You got a, you got a pretty comfortable lead. I'm not saying rush your shot, but at the same time, you're still looking to score here. So even without the shot clock, you think that they should still try Absolutely. to Absolutely. You've got to capitalize on your lead. You've got to try to go into halftime, you know, stunting them. Well, the lead has been chopped down from 9 to 4, 31-27. Thorn lead. Make that 32-27 as Prasad makes the free throw. Here comes Anderson, pushes it left to Gregory. Left side, nice fake. Takes it strong, but can't get it to finish. And Rebound. Right there by McIntosh. And Dylan Gregory's had a, has a very good game today. You saw a couple finishes there on the left side and made a couple jumpers. Yesterday he was, you know, he was frustrated. He was, you know, he wasn't playing within himself. I thought he was trying to do a little too much yesterday. Absolutely, yeah. Good foot shift. Get down low and move your feet. Back up top to Austin as they count it down. And oh, it looks like Brown with the foul on the ground. And he'll go to the line in bonus. No, that foul was on Marcus Anderson with the foul. And that'll put Austin at the line. 32-27, Thornley leads it. 7.1 seconds left. Two tremendous coaches on the sideline. Omar Miles for St. Edmund Campion. Shane James for Thornley. As we mentioned earlier and yesterday on the broadcast, the coaching ranks have also improved tremendously over the last, say, five years in Canadian basketball. Most definitely, and, and what we're seeing here at, at some of these schools is the AAU programs are combining forces with the high schools, and these kids are getting... Persaud! Wow. Persaud with the three at the buzzer and gives them an eight-point lead. 
And Shane James is already in the in the change room there. He's still not happy. No, he's not happy. He's got some things he wants to say to his teammate, to his team, and, and all the teammates. I think he's going to say basically, play the right way and be quiet in terms of what's going on in the court. Just play the game. And there you have it. The first half is over. 35-27. Thorn Lee has the lead over St. Edmund Campion. You're watching the web stream, webcast brought to you by Ill Minds Media, North Pole Hoops, and On Point Basketball. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Stay tuned for the second half. Well, uh
Welcome back to the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Second half action about to begin between Thorne Lee in white versus St. Edmund Campion in blue. Elias Spiet, my partner here. Elias, what was the, the game plan so far? What happened in the game? And give us some stats from the first half, sir. I mean, we got Nero Sansarend in here with uh, 11 points leading for Thorne Lee. Dylan Gregory leading with eight for Campion. You saw him uh, hit a couple of mid-range jumpers and also finish at the rim. Um, Thorne Lee went on a little bit of a run there to, to end off the first half. Obviously, Coach Shane James, we saw him storm into, uh, into the locker room there, still unimpressed with, with his team's performance. Um, and I think it's because he has an expectation of them based off of the way they came into this tournament um, with, a, with a big win. So now you got Jaden Lewis back on the floor. He was in foul trouble early on with those ticky-tack fouls we talked about from the referees. Um, should be a completely different game now. I think Thorn Lee has got, oh, look, you see a backdoor cut. Bad pass there by Sarindran. And you got Dylan Gregory on the other side. Thanks for that recap there, Elias. Incredible analysis as usual. Thorn Lee gets it. And they push it back. And as you mentioned, Jaden Lewis, a key part of their Thornhill, you know, game plan. And he was taken out of it by the calls in the first half. And we want to see him in action. He's got the physicality. He's really a, a talented player. We want to see what he can do in the second half. Here's St. Felix. That's Kimberl St. Felix. Guarded by Joel Brown. Long arms. Out to Austin. Guarded by Gregory. He shifts Gregory to the right. Drives. Out of control. C.J. Bennett picks it up. Oh, and the drive there. Quinton Hamilton goes up and a block is called by St. Felix. And Hamilton, who you mentioned quite a bit last evening, he needs a breakout performance as well, doesn't he, Elias? Yeah, well, we saw him have that. We saw glimpses of what he's able to do. He had that huge putback jam, which we'll have highlights of nice. um, later tonight or tomorrow. Video team's work, working on that. But what we've seen from him so far is the use, using his length and explosiveness on the defensive end. And then on offense, he's still, he's still learning himself. He's a very streaky shooter at the time. But, at, you know, when he's stationed, when his feet are in position, he's able to knock down, as you saw there on the line. And the lead is 35-29. Right now it's a six-point bulge. Thorn Lee is still leading. And let's see what the offense is going to say for the Thorn Lee squad, the Thorn Lee Thunder, as they're affectionately known. Score clock now function. Team for the bench, please. Looks like there's a score clock malfunction. And so, and so we'll take a little bit of a break here while they figure it out. Uh, you're tuned into the webcast of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Please stay tuned. We'll be back after this short break. It won't move. It won't move. won't move. Okay, go home. It's five and a half minutes. So it's okay. We get to go home.
Welcome back to the 2014 Father Henry Carr Classic. My name is Drew Ebank from OnPointBasketball.com alongside Elias Viet of NorthPoleHoops.com. We rejoin the action, 35-31, throwing lead leads. And they swing it on the outside, nice drive there by number 22, McIntosh, but he can't get it to go. Back come Campion, CJ Bennett on the right, left side, up top to Anderson, swings it to Brown and a travel right there, Hamilton. Again, Quinton Hamilton may be trying to do too much. Now we got we got a lot of speed on the floor right now for Thorn Lee. Kimbrell leading the breaks. Now in transition, I'd like to see Thorn Lee really push the ball and fill in their lanes. Oh, almost sipped into the backcourt there. Yeah. And here comes. And instead, Anderson. it's Campion on the fast break. There you go, Bennett. Oh, just lays it in. Almost a half dunk there. And the lead is cut to two. Here's a run for Campion. And you know they have at least a couple runs in them before this game is over, yep. Elias. I like the defense that's being played there by Marcus Anderson, forcing him towards the help. And he picks up another steal. And here comes Hamilton. Drive. Can't get it to drop. Oh, that would have been a big one if he got it. Surrendering with the rebound. Here comes Thorne Lee. Oh, some terrible plays right now. And that Jaden Lewis, that was not a smart play. And Shane James doesn't like what he sees. He wants a timeout. Very, very disgusted with the play of his team, Elias. I don't blame him, man. Multiple turnovers in a row. You know, when it comes when it comes consecutive, it's it's time to call it in and get this team back together. Well, the lead has been chopped from eight points at the half to two right now, and there's still a lot of time. Five minutes and 37 seconds left in the third quarter. That's eons. You have a quarter and a half more than a quarter and a half to go. So, uh, you know, champion, they're ready. They, they see a weakness right now, I think, in the defense and the transition defense of Thorne Lee, which has been a, a little bit shaky in, to start the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, if, if these guys are going to go on another run of their own, um, you know, I, I can hear Shane James here talking in the background, and he's absolutely right in what he's pointing out. Guys are over dribbling rather than moving the ball. Now, if there's one guy dribbling, what happens is everyone else you know, plants their feet and is, it ends up ball watching. So that ball just got to keep swinging, get, keep getting it in rotation. And then the defense is forced to move off of that and good things will happen from there. And we'll get, we'll try to get a little in the huddle, uh, in the Thornley huddle at some point during the game to let you in on the action and the, the coaching philosophies that are going on uh, behind the Thornley uh, bench. All right, on the end line, it's Thornley, St. Felix on the inbounds. Full court press right now. Yes, it should be Campion ball. Got to call it like it is. There you go. Sorry to my Thornley peeps on that. But you all want to win fairly, of course. And Coach James says we got it right. Here's Campion. And that is Brown up top to Bennett. Bennett's looking for the call from Coach Miles, who's pacing the sidelines, barking out instructions. Here is Brown, the grade nine phenom. Swings it, Gregory on the baseline, no good. Rebound, Hamilton. Oh, but Gregory, what a pass! But he can't get it to go. You know, you just gotta think that Gregory, if he gets a couple buckets to go, he's really gonna start to, you know, you know get a feel for himself in this tournament. It just doesn't seem to be going for it. Now with Campion, anytime they're playing that four out, one in with Quinton inside, um, I think it opens up a lot of opportunities for this team. However, you got to be able to feed Quinton from the wings and then get the defense to collapse on him. That's when you're going to get your, you know, your kicks to the corners, your open threes, and then your baseline drives. And there you have it. It's a two-point ball game, 35, 33, five minutes and seven seconds left. Here's St. Felix on the curl. Oh, nice pass inside. That was number 22, McIntosh, inside to Surendran, and that was beautiful, Elias. That's exactly what happens. Execute Perfect execution when the ball is moving. And Hamilton gets it on the turn. Not a real fundamental shot there, kind of wild. Can't get it to go. Here comes Austin to the right. Up fake, drives. Oh, that is nice, and he gets it to go. McIntosh, and I don't know what was said during the timeout, but he's decided he wants to come up and really take control for Thorne Lee. And it's a six-point game. Thorne Lee up 
34. Four and a half minutes to play. And here comes Thornley back. That's number 22. Oh, and he can't get it to go. McIntosh, it's knocked out of bounds. It will be Thornley's ball on the end line. Here comes a sub in. Devontae Daniels comes in. And Dylan Gregory checks out for Campion. And inbounds, Prasad. St. Felix goes baseline, guarded by Brown. Guarded by Brown, oh, almost a five second call. Austin up top, guarded by Hamilton. Austin goes left, kicks it out. Surrendering for the three, no good. Rebound by C.J. Bennett. That was a nice grab right there. Now C.J.'s been big for them on the glass. And here's Bennett with the drive, and he gets it to go, and Coach James cannot like that defense there from Thorne Lee. And Gold comes back, number 23, misses it. That was Austin. Anderson goes right back on two. Oh no, not a good layup right there. And a travel call. And that will be turned right back over to Campion. See, both teams right now are trying to play some high tempo basketball, but it's looking very sloppy. There is high tempo basketball that can be still be clean, you know, clean cuts, clean passes. On the, on the move, filling, guys are filling in their lanes, but right now it's looking really sloppy. Okay, baseline, Bennett gives it inside. Anderson, Daniels, kicks it to Gregory, and he still can't get one to drop. The three is no good. St. Felix, back to Prasad, pulls up. That is beautiful! In rhythm, 43-36, Thorin Lee. And that's when your offense is moving. Here's Brown, comes back, and Prasad sends that into oblivion after making the three-point play. And Prasad is in the game right now, Elias. Well, you saw him slide over there for the help defense. You got three bodies up in the air looking to block that shot. And, you know, it's, it's awesome to see when, when guys are, are playing together on the defensive end. Guys are working together to make sure that he's not getting a, getting a good shot off. Here's Bennett, kicks it to the left side. Brown, Brown over to Gregory, up top to Bennett. Anderson, back to Gregory, does he want it again? Heat check, no. Bennett up top, left hand dribble. Defended by Prasad, Gregory, he's going left, kicks it out to the left side with Brown up top. Back to Anderson, and they're running offense champion. Daniels, fake, spin. Oh, and he gets called for the walk. I thought he stayed on his pivot, but you can argue otherwise. I thought it was close, but yeah, good call. We're gonna give it to him on that one. And let's just go over uh, what the referees were letting us uh, know about the hand check. You wanna just give a little analysis. The first half, we thought there was a, some ticky-tack fouls and a lot of you know fouls on hands, and the referee explained it, what was happening. Yeah, when we, when we were talking to them, they were explaining that the National Federation rules is that you can't have any contact, so there's no hand regardless of whether it extends or not. Whereas in FIBA, you can place your hand on the defender or on his back or on his hip as long as you don't extend. So. And you know what, we, we also and, 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 you know, thought everywhere else is going FIBA right now, and why is it that in Ontario that we're still playing on the Federation? Well, that's a problem at the high school level in general. Whether they're playing during the summer, whether they're playing OBA, whether they're playing CYBL, or, you know, they're jumping back and forth between these different versions, and the kids aren't getting used to playing within a certain way. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's got to be consistent. You have to, uh, you know, get that in their mindset. They're going to play basketball one way. And the thing is, all the other leagues above are playing the same way. But we seem to be, you know, stuck back in the 60s for some reason. Yeah, we're, we're pretty behind. I would say we're pretty behind. Shot clock, too. I think, you know, it's about time we have a shot clock as well. At the high school level, no doubt. I mean, it's, it, it makes games more interesting at the end of games where, where teams are trying to hold on to the ball. Um, it keeps... It gets them prepared for the next level, that's for, for sure. And you know, it, it keeps the rhythm. It keeps the rhythm in the game. A nice crowd here on hand, you know, early afternoon. And uh, it's great to see so many people out checking out Canadian high school basketball. And the crowd will no doubt grow as this tournament progresses this evening. The finals, 6.30 this evening. The, the gold, bronze medal game at five. We will have those two games on the webcast, as well as the semifinal coming up after this between St. Mike's and Eastern. 
And I think that is going to be one interesting game, a clash of styles, that's for sure. It's, yes, two Toronto teams going at it. Eastern Commerce in its, in its final year as a school. Um, but like we saw earlier in this tournament, these kids are warriors. They're, they're going to come out and they're going to battle regardless who their competition is. You got it right. And as we get back to action, there's a traveling call on Cambrian and a few uh, traveling calls on their team. Fundamentally, they've really got to, you know, tighten that up. And here comes St. Felix on the right side. Thorn Lee going left to right on your screen. Oh, great backdoor look. Maybe a bounce pass would yep. have been a perfect there, and it would have been a home run for number 35, Lewis, who hasn't really gotten off yet. Here's Lewis, pull-up jumper. Oh, doesn't go. Prasad fighting inside, but can't get that rebound. Daniels over to Bennett. And as you hear Marcus Anderson imploring his team to relax, Bennett pulls up. That's not quite relaxing. Felix pushing ahead. Oh, Lewis gets the ball stolen. Marcus Anderson once again coming up with a seal. That's his fourth seal of the game. Marcus Anderson does not give up on a play. It doesn't matter where the opponent is, inside or outside. And here's Anderson, shifts left. Great feed, Daniels inside. And he gets it to drop and cuts the nine point deficit to seven at 45-38, one minute and 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Thorn Lee, Felix, St. Felix. Oh, another back door, doesn't give it this time. Now the combination of Daniels and Bennett for Campion have been tremendous on the glass here, giving them extra possessions and really getting them, getting them in the groove. And there as you have it, there you have it. Number 35, Lewis gets it to go. Finally, he gets a shot to fall. And there is a call on Lewis reaching around. Daniels trying to play better defensively. And you know, we, we talked about it a little earlier. Yes, the refs did explain to us that there is absolutely zero contact, non-negotiable. However, the kids are still looking at him like, what are you talking about? I didn't get him, right? So I don't think it's been explained to them that you cannot make any contact. Well, all around, it's gotta be explained, explained not only to coaches, but also to players. The coaches got to relay that to the players, but it doesn't seem the coaches even know what rules they're playing under. And a traveling call again. That's the third traveling call in about the fifth possession for Campion. Might be trying to do too much. I'd like to see them move the ball more instead of relying on one-on-one -on -one basketball. Here comes St. Felix coming down to right. Joel Brown on defense. And here comes St. Felix. Takes it from Surendran. St. Felix over to 32. Prasad, Narendran. Up top, St. Felix, guarded by Brown. Surendran with the screen. Looks inside. Oh, and it's knocked away. St. Felix got it on the inbounds. Oh, Looks Surrender inside. Losing it. And Anderson tries it, but no good. 47-38, that's the score after three quarters. Right here at the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Stay tuned for the fourth quarter of this first semifinal. We'll be right back after a short break.
Welcome back to the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. My name is Drew Ebanks alongside Elliot Spiet. Elliot, the fourth quarter, this is it. It's crucial, nine point deficit for champion. Do you think they have a chance to get back into this? I mean, of course, there's a lot of time on the clock. Um, the rhythm right now is in Thorn Lee's favor. Looking for a call here. And that's on Daniels. And Nerosin will get to the line, and he leads the game right now with 16 points for Thorn Lee. It's a game high. And you know what? It's a quiet 16 points, but he's just been out there workmanlike, getting it done, cutting, hitting threes. He's do doing it all out there. A guy that's uh, got a lot of size at 6'6", grade 11 player, so still a lot of uh, potential for him. And he makes his first free throw there. Nice stroke. It looks like... Uh, He's got great form on that. And when you have a big man that can shoot and step outside and hit Jays, uh, that's a definite bonus for your squad. I mean, here, based off necessity for Thorn Lee, he's playing as a big. Um, I think he's like we've seen him in different environments, and he seems to be more of a, a three man. Great size for the three position. And there he is, corrals a rebound, and he's just doing everything right now. Dribbling through the legs, kicks it outside. That's McIntosh, goes to the left. Up to St. Felix. Great Kicks cuts it. off the ball here by St. Felix. Thorne up top. McIntosh pulls up for three. No good. Rebound Brown. See, that to me is a bad shot right now. You're up 10 points. You're really trying to extend this league. Had everyone on the perimeter for Thorne Lee, and he pulls up for a three-point shot. No rebound there. No need for that. You've got to milk the clock as well. Okay, Brown gets it from Bennett. And this champion team doesn't seem like they really have a beat on what they want to do. That shot is not a good one. You can see that from a mile away. Sim Hamilton. Similar to the one we saw on this side. And Omar Miles is absolutely livid at Joel Brown right now. And he has full rights to be because they are not running anything on offense. It's just like a freelance kind of play right now. 48-38, the lead for Thorne Lee is 10. Seven minutes to go in the game and the trip to the finals of the Father Henry Carr Classic that will not be taken by Father Henry Carr this year. One of the few times, if ever in history, that Father Henry Carr has not made it to the final of this prestigious tournament. Well, you know, they had that first game was, I don't know, I, I, still, I think they're still thinking about that first game, only allowed 27 points and they lost against this Thornley team right here. Um, who looks completely different, by the way, from what we saw. They were absolutely dominant against Father Henry Carr, who has a lot of depth. Um, but FHC is a team that you're going to watch develop throughout over the, over the course of the season, and they're going to find themselves within the top three, top four teams in the country. Um, you know, they got a lot, of, a lot of different pieces. Marcus Bonick, of course, coming back. Uh, one of their major contributors can, can, you know, can give you 20 on any given night. And you have Shea Brown, you know, other guys that are younger guys that are, that are really going to be stepping up for them. And back to the action, 48-38, Campion facing a 10-point deficit. Marcus Anderson, he's got to get some things going. Bennett, and that's a travel. And they moved before he put the ball down. And we've seen, uh, I, I counted five or six really unforced turnovers from this Campion squad. They're frazzled today for some reason. I mean, we, with that travel call that was just called there, a very good call by the referee. It was, it's, it's always on the first step. Guys are, are moving and getting their dribble down before, or not simultaneously with their first step. That's what they're getting caught on. So the, the dribble has to come down before that first step is taken. Jaden Lewis starting to heat up right now. Buries the three, 51-38. Thornley extends their lead. They look to have a little bit of rhythm themselves to finish out this game. Bennett takes the screen from Hamilton and he drives and nice extended layup. I'd like to see more of Bennett going to the hoop and really trying to take over a bit because it doesn't seem like anybody else on Campion is. Yeah, I mean, I think Bennett's been their, their most efficient player. I think if you keep the ball in his hands, good things, good things have been happening for Campion. And Thornley has it on the baseline. It's St. Felix with the inbounds. Here comes Lewis. Surrendering. Lewis takes it. And there is that call. Marcus Anderson got caught with his hands in the cookie jar. And the referee has no choice but to call it under Federation rules. And that was a perfect call there. And Anderson knows it as he says, my bad, I got it. St. Felix on the inbounds. Lewis up top. 
Almost turned over, but he get, manages to grab it. Back to St. Felix. Guarded by Brown. Brown screen for Surrendering. Surrendering rolls to the hoop. St. Felix. And a block on Daniels. And you hear referee saying he's got to be square. And you know, it's a little thing like that, just the nuances. When I look at a guy in the NBA, a guy like Morris Peterson, who used to take charges, he was the king of charge taking. It's, it's, are you ready to sacrifice your body? If you are, you must get yourself in a position. You have to slide as quick as you can and turn your chest straight and, and, and perpendicular to the defender. If you're not gonna do that, you're gonna get called for the block every Absolutely. time. Well, some guys, when they're, when they're trying to set a charge, you know, last second, they decide they wanna protect themselves and they, that's what happened there. They turned their shoulder and got called on the, on the, on the foul. You gotta be willing to take the punishment if you're gonna step in for the charge. Bennett can't get it to go. Surrendering. Oh, good heads up play. Lewis, and he's fouled. Hamilton taps him on the back of the head. And, and every Campion time Campion's been every time Campion's been trying to make a run here, you know, Thornley goes right back at him in transition. What a great feed though. Surrendering the big man finds his teammate on the break on the left side, and Lewis is starting to really heat up a bit. Misses the free throw. Daniels with the rebound. Knocked away, back to Hamilton, up to Bennett, in the corner for Anderson, he drives baseline, looks outside for Brown, Brown no good, air ball. And here we got Kimbrell on the break. Oh, nice pass inside for Lewis, turn around, jump shot. That turnaround jumper of his is real smooth. And once, it, once he gets it going, you know, by now the defender has to recognize that that, that is his go-to. Yeah, I haven't he, seen a counter move to that yet. And no one, yeah, no one is really, you know, getting a beat on him when he makes that spin. Yeah. You've got to get over there to help. Well, he sells it really well. You know, he, he gets the defender off of his feet before the turnaround. So, I mean, credit to, to Jaden on that move. Let's see if we can get a little bit of the in the huddle action here. We'll get some audio in the huddle from Thorne Lee and see what Coach James is saying. Hey, you're gonna win this game by getting stops. All right, all right. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. There you have it. Some in the huddle action. My name is Drew Eubanks, alongside Elias Spiet of NorthPoleHoops.com. I am from OnPointBasketball.com. Ill Minds Media in the building, of course, bringing you this amazing webcast of the whole tournament, pretty much for the weekend. Stay tuned. Right after this game, we will have the second semifinal between. Eastern Commerce Saints and St. Mike's and it's very significant for Eastern as their school unfortunately is shutting down and this will be the last year we'll see the Eastern Commerce Saints. I mean they got a they got a legacy to live up to and that's what they've done so far in this tournament. You know, like we said earlier this is a team that battles every year. Oh, Ooh. Hamilton off the rebound. Sorry Elias, I got to cut no you problem. off for a quick second there. And it's 56-42 though, and St. Felix right back at it. And you were saying about Eastern Commerce a Shoot, little earlier. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Quentin Hamilton had his uh, fourth putback there. Fourth putback dunk. Oh, but yes, I was saying Kevin Jeffers really gets these guys ready every season, regardless of, of what kind of personnel he has. He gets them fighting in every game. He gets them, you know, discipline. And we'll see just how disciplined they are against St. Mike's. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Oh, and the drive. And there you have it. Gregory not really willing to take a charge there, not setting his feet. And number 32, Darius Thorne, will go to the free throw line. 58-42, Thornley in full control. As Edmund Campion calls a 30-second timeout. And as Coach Elias Spiet gives a little bit of a uh -huh. education to Gregory on his way back from the timeout. 4.20 left in the fourth quarter. It's 
42. Thornley with the lead of 16 points so far. 30 second timeout, referee implores them to get back on the court. And my analysis of this game for Campion is they really just have not been the Campion of old. And obviously they have some young players. They really lost a lot of talent in the last couple of years. Um, but they're gonna have to get back to the drawing board and find out what kind of team they truly want to be. They're, they kind of seem to be stuck in between wanting to push the ball but not having the correct fundamentals to get it down the court. And also their half court offense is very, it's, it's haphazard right now. Well, you know, the Campion usually starts off the season, you know, a little, they got a lot of raw pieces, that's what it is. The challenge right now for Coach Omar Miles is really helping these guys um, you know, increase their IQ. So they're going to be watching a lot of game tape, a lot of doing a lot of individual workouts to really get them prepared. You know, as we seen a couple of years ago with Kadar Wright, who's now at the uh, University of British Columbia, that team was a team that you know started off started off pretty good, but by the end of the season were entirely different. And that's what we're going to see from Campion here. You have a lot of raw pieces who are going to who are going to come together and really be a be considered a top team by when it's all said and done. Excellent analysis by Elias Viet of NorthpoleHoops.com. My name is Drew Banks from OnPointBasketball.com, bringing you the best in Canadian basketball. Several years in the running we've been doing this, and we will continue to bring you the best in Canadian basketball. And Darius Thorne there. Darius Thorne, sorry, excuse me, yeah, Drew. Got called on a, an offensive there. He, these are his first minutes of the game. In the, in the, he started, I think, at the end of the third quarter. And... Coach Shane has has had an issue with his 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 body control and his you know he he's he's getting after it no doubt about it he's a high energy player but he wants to see him more controlled and he's got a very uh, good body for basketball physical specimen right there so he should be able to take advantage of that and Campion can't get anything to drop they are missing bunnies they're missing everything on the inside Gregory has got that frustrated look on his face again. And he's just got to get back to the drawing board after this tournament and really work on some little small fundamental aspects of his game. Yep. And in for Campion is 31 to Charles. And the ball is tipped away. It looks like it still will remain Campion ball. 60-42 is the score. 321 left in the fourth quarter of this first semifinal between St. Edmund Campion in blue and Thorn Lee Thunder in white. And here we got... Uh you know, in the gym right now, just walked in, we got uh, Duquesne University, uh, Fairfield, we got Western Michigan, uh, Western Ontario. Uh, so a lot of schools coming out to, to really get their recruiting up in Canada. It's great to see. I mean, this is the first major tournament, and they're here already. Yep. In years past, we would see them maybe towards the, you know, middle of the season into the new year, but they're here early. They want to get a beat on the talent that's up here in Canada and in Toronto and in the GTA. I mean, we, there's, you know, teams like... Teams from high major to low major have already been tracking these guys and, you know, watching them in practices. A lot of guys have come down for workouts as well, and, and it's a pattern that's going to continue. Um, in the past, we've seen we've seen patterns of you know kids that are all set on leaving to the states. When you got high level tournaments like this and you got coaches walking into your gym, there's really no need to leave home. I agree. I mean, we need to build the culture here. There's so much talent. We just have to harness it here. And coaches will travel everywhere. They go to Europe, they go to Africa, they go all over the world. Canada's next door to the States. It should be no problem for them to come up. You know, as long as their passport's good, they got no issues, they'll be up here throughout the season. And back to the action here. Thorn Lee has extended their lead 62-42 with just two minutes to play here. This one looks, uh, looks to be wrapping up in Thorn Lee's favor. Now, what do you think in terms of Thornley going forward? Of course, they'll be in the final this evening at 6.30. I mean, regardless of this 20-point lead here, they're going to they're gonna have to play a lot better in the final, whether it's St. Mike's or, or Eastern that they match up against. Now, if it if it's happens to be the better matchup for them, it would be Eastern Commerce. I think St. Mike's has too many pieces there that can that can really hurt you they really shoot the three ball well they know how to space out the floor and then when the three ball is not going for them they look inside for Danilo Dejericic who's been excellent for them even last year as a ninth grader a 6-7 six, 6-7 seven, six, seven forward who has you know perimeter abilities who has a very dynamic feel to the game so 
I mean, this is a kid who's going to get looked at by high major programs as well. Danilo's got such a high ceiling already in the Canada basketball program as, as well. They know him for the last few years, and uh, he's just a guy who, you know, when you think of these kids playing grade nine, playing senior basketball, it shows you that the skill level uh, for some of them is really, really high. And, and it's good to see that, uh, you know, as, as well as guys like Joel Brown, they're playing really up in their age brackets, whether it's AAU ball or uh, at the high school level. And, and here's Save Felix. Yep. And we've had Canada basketball in the building uh, all three days, actually. Um, you know, still tracking their task program, um, tracking guys that were, were in there. And um, we've seen, you know, we've seen Andrew Nemhard, we've seen, we've seen Joel Brown, we've seen Danilo Djurcic, all underclassmen here who have been very impactful for their teams. The talent just keeps rising to the top here. Oh, great feed, Lewis! But no, travel. And Darius Thorne, who's trying to get a little bit of rhythm here in the last two minutes of the game, gets called for steps. Beautiful pass there. Good job by Jaden Lewis recognizing the cutter. And you don't see enough of that. You don't see, you know, young players playing without the ball, moving. Uh, you know, they all want to have the ball in their hands. I'd like to see a lot more movement. But I do like what Thorn Lee does on the, on the right side, particularly with the screen and then the, uh, the cut to the basket. So on the give and go, I, I like their offense, that part of it, that's for sure. On uh, a pull up for substitute number 22, Rexford Agamon in the game now. Lewis, full court press by Campion. Lewis breaks it with ease. Behind the back dribble, shoots it left to St. Felix. St. Felix guarded by Javon Cox. St. Felix calls Lewis for the screen, goes right, swings it back to number 21, Kyle Goodwin. Lewis gets it back from Thorne. Lewis drives left. Oh, and he's blocked, but picks, picked up is Darius Thorne. He's there for the garbage. 64-44, Thorne Lee leads it. No good for Agamang. Rexford Agamang in the game. He's a great 11 player, 5'7". And he's trying to keep a hold of St. Felix, who takes the screen. Back to Lewis up top, 35 seconds left in the game. St. Felix off the handoff. St. Felix, full control. And that'll round it up for Twenty seconds the first semifinal. So Thornley will go on to play the winner of Eastern Commerce and St. Mike's, which will be uh, the next game here. We'll take a short break once this buzzer goes and we'll get back to the action. Thank you for tuning in. You're watching the webcast of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. There you have it, the final 64-44 Thorn Lee Thunder take it over the St. Edmund Campion Bears. My name is Drew Banks, alongside Elias Biet and Ilmines Media on the technical duties. And we'll be right back. Stay tuned for the next game, which is Eastern Commerce in their last appearance at the Early Bird Classic versus St. Mike's, a powerhouse in Toronto basketball.
Welcome back to the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Hey, hey, Raptor! Raptor! Welcome back to the 2014. Welcome back to the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Thank you so much for your patience. My name is Drew Banks, alongside Elias Spiet. We we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're back on board now. We're joining the game in progress, which is the second semifinal between the Eastern Commerce Saints in white against the St. Mike's Blue Raiders in blue. And the score right now is 10-8 for St. Mike's early on. And Elias, what do you see so far from this ball game? I mean, Eastern Commerce is really getting after it on, in terms of the boards. Um, on the other end, we got Danilo Djuricic, who's been great defensively, you know, really blocking and altering shots. We saw him pin one against the glass on the last on the last possession. Um, this is going to be a, this is going to be a real dogfight. Oh, as we saw Jason McDonald there go up for a for an alley -oop. Eastern's got some real athletes on the floor. Missed it, couldn't get it to drop. Rebound outside. Dixon, and on the drive, he misses it. And that's Dixon again. No, that's Josie Thomas with it. And a foul on Danilo Djuricic on that play. I'll just quickly go over the lineups for Eastern Commerce. Number 23, Josie Thomas. Number 33, Narcisse Ambanza. Number 35, Dwight Dixon. Jason McDonald is number 5. And number 12, Cadre Gray. And for St. Mike's. Number five, Marcus Carr. Number 22, Colby Ketavong. Number 31, Danilo Juricic. Number 33, Kayon out Julian Grant. And of course, number three with the point guard, at the point guard spot with the ball is Nelson Caputo. And Caputo almost throws it away over to Juricic. Carr on the wing, and he makes the three. Marcus Carr, one of the younger players on the squad, makes it a five-point lead for St. Mike's, up 13-8. And that's an offensive foul called on Narcisse and Banza as he bowled in with his shoulder and got called on the offensive. Marcus Carr's really cleaned up that three-pointer. You see on his, on his last shot there, the release with the follow-through, everything looks together, the elbow's tucked in, looking very fluid. In for Eastern is Kosim Simpson, number 44, and number 34, Delon Jamat. And there's Juricic over to Caputo. Pull up, Jay. No good. Rebound, McDonald. Gets fouled by Caputo. And Eastern will still control the basketball. Inbounds. And Banza to McDonald. McDonald, very good ball handler. The leader on this Eastern Commerce Saints team. He's been around for quite a bit. Nice pass underneath. No good right there as Simpson can't get it to go. Here's Paradina. Juricic. Danilo, a little bit pressure on the top. Carr and goes look at, left. Look at the matchup here on Danilo. Great pass by Carr. And Kenavong is going to go to the line. No! Travel there called before. Travel out of bounds. Ball goes back to Eastern. And right on cue, as we said, the gym is starting to fill up here in anticipation of the bronze medal game, the consolation finals, as well as the bronze medal and gold medal games later on this evening. My name is Drew Banks alongside Tar Elias Spiet. I thought I was going to get away with that, but... I did it again. <laughs> Elias is here with me on the call, on the play-by-play, -play, on the color commentary, and the analysis of what's going on. Let's see what St. Mike's is going to do with a five-point lead, Elias. 
Right now, the focus has been really in their offense, trying to get their, their three-point shooters open. Nicola Pardina, Marcus Carr, we saw him hit one early. They're a very perimeter-oriented team. And this, this time, they kick it in there to Danilo. Danilo kicks back out, and Nelson Caputo lands one from the corner, extending the lead 16-8 St. Mike's. I'm telling you, when they got their threes going, like you mentioned on yesterday's cast, they are pretty much unstoppable. They kick it inside. Juricic knows when the double team comes to move it and not, you know, keep it with him and get a double team on him. And it's just great to see the, the ball movement on the St. Mike squad. Outside, number 44, can't get it to go. And that's Simpson. Jamont doesn't get the put back and a foul. As McDonald is fouled by Caputo. Nope. That's on 22 for Blue. That's Ketavong. And you can see what kind of what kind of dog, what kind of fight they got. Eastern Commerce has gotten them. These guys are not backing down from anything. No, they never back down. That's a staple of the Eastern Commerce Saints from I've been watching them way back. And that he's got to make a better decision. You're going up against a 6667 big man. Not a good shot and a great pull up by Nelson Caputo who's showing the scouts in the building that he's got Division I caliber game. You know, he's been, he's been recruited by Baylor for the longest time now. They, they really love him. They love his poise. They love his leadership capability. And, you know, the fact that he's so tr he's really developed his shooting game, it goes a long way. Yeah, you got to put it to work in, right? You know, you whatever you're deficient in, you really have to put the work in over the summer, uh, you know, when you can beyond practice time, get in the gym and work on your game. And we see that out of him. You know, that three in the corner there was so beautiful. It was this perfect form, in rhythm, and he got it to go down. All right, we've rejoined the action. Caputo, speaking of Nelson, got it up top. Paradina on the right side, fakes the pass, drives, sidesteps, no good. Jamont with the rebound, nice outlet. And Dixon did not realize that the clock was going. And there you have it, 18-8, St. Mike's leading after one quarter and a 10-point gap already, Elias. And just to give us your analysis of that first quarter. I mean, they're doing a really good, St. Mike's is really doing a really good job getting the ball into Danilo. Danilo's waiting for the, for the defense to collapse and then kicking it back out to the corners. Once the kick comes out, there's a good rotation. You know, they're not, they haven't really forced any shots. Um, you know, re the rebounding game is going to be is going to be the big deal here for for Eastern Commerce. And we heard Coach Jeffers earlier, um, you know, mentioning that guys, we got to win it on the glass. We got to win this game on the glass. If you give St. Mike's extra possession, if you give them a second and third chance, you know, to get extra possessions off, then they're in a world of trouble. You definitely can't do that against this, you know, solidly coached team. Of course, the coaches for both teams are solid, and the assistants, head coach. Uh, for uh, uh, St. Mike's, Jeff Zauner, and of course, head coach Kevin Jeffers from Eastern Commerce. Uh, they've been around a long time, these coaches, been in the systems that they run.
Thanks for joining us. This is the web stream of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Second quarter action, 24-10 St. Mike's with the lead over Eastern Commerce. Thank you for joining us here this year. It's a tremendous talent here in the building. And as we see, Danilo Djuricic is at the line looking to extend the St. Mike's lead. I mean, this game can, can get out of hand in a, in a hurry. If Eastern Commerce doesn't uh, really strap up here, and, and, and you got to deny the, the low post there. As soon as the ball gets in Danilo, you know you got to make it hard for him to catch. And he makes one of two. It's a 25-10 lead, and Eastern has to be really careful because, like you said, this can get out of hand quickly. Dixon over to Gray, back to Dixon. They have no height inside. That's the problem with Eastern. Nice rebound. And that is Thomas, Josie Thomas, working inside. No height on this Eastern Commerce squad. They're going to have to get some shots going from outside. And Josie Thomas makes one of two there. Still a 14 point deficit. Eastern now puts on a press, full court, zone press. Paradina, Carr. Paradina drives, kicks it. Caputo fakes the shot. Back out to Carr. Can't get the three to go. Rebound Gray. Oh man, that's a miss by Josie Thomas. It. Dixon with the putback, and he has a chance to make it a three-point play, Elias. It looks like uh, Josie's a little shaken up there, got hit in the stomach, maybe maybe a little winded. But it got cleaned up for him, and we got one at the line. There you have it, he makes one, it now cut to 11. He presses on Paradina, Carr, Paradina. Bravo! And Nick picked up his dribble there. He was looking for Danilo to come back out. The guard's got to be able to get to the ball in those kind of situations. Yeah, it looked like the guard on the right side, on the far side, went away and confused him on that play. Ball swung outside, number 42, no good. Trevor Hutton. Man, I have, I have not seen this many air balls in my life. Guys are just putting up rushed shots, not shooting it with confidence. There's the presses on, Caputo. Carr swings it over to Paradina, no good. Oh, Julian Grant with a rebound, and he's fouled. And that one looks like it's on Josie Thomas. Yes, it is. Josie Thomas grabbed him. That'll, that'll be the second on Thomas. He's got to be careful going forward. He's already got two. Let's see if Coach Jeffries is going to keep him in the game.
Julian Grant. And makes another one, 26-16. Eastern with it. Dixon carries it up. All the way to the hoop. Almost gets it to go, but it's blocked by Juricic. Scramble on the floor. Jump ball. And it goes to Eastern. Very fortunate on a play, you know, got blocked and still got the ball back and fought for it. And they're able to maintain, uh, or trying to keep it within 10 points here. And that's the fight that we're talking about from these guys. You know, they'll get on the floor, they're scrappy, they're gonna Force a jump ball. They got no height whatsoever, but they're still in the game. Oh, good rebound. Number 12, Gray picks it up, and it is an eight point game just like that. Hand check right there, and like we said in the first game telecast, you can't have your hands on him. And number 35, Dwight Dixon, guilty of having his hands in the cookie jar for Eastern. On that last play they were looking for, Nelson was looking for Nicola Pardina to, uh, to flash in the middle for him. Had an open, uh, open look at the rim if it, had he flashed. And we're in the bonus, we've got Nelson Caputo at the line for two. Makes his first. Nelson trying to extend the lead back to 10 points if he makes this free throw. Violation blue. And unforced errors right now by St. Mike's are causing some confidence to come back and life back into this Eastern squad. Here's Dixon bringing it up. Defended by Caputo. Oh, nice cut, back door. Oh, got stapled by Julian Grant though. Gula Osman picks it up, Dixon up top. Dixon running the point. Swings it over to Gray. Back to Dixon. Josie Thomas comes up. Here he is. That's a foul right there. Paradina with the foul. And Dixon will go to the line. And DJ there on the attack, you know, this is this is a good situation to take advantage of. This could get Eastern right back into it. You know, taking taking advantage of a mismatch there. Paradina, a much longer defender, but not as low to the ground as Dixon. Dixon taking advantage of that and beating him off the first step. Nice free throws. And it's a seven point lead for St. Mike's. It's chopped in half. And they still have that press that's been giving St. Mike's trouble. Back over to Caputo. Osman on the guard. Julian Grant goes baseline, spins back. Carr, Caputo sets up for the three. And he gets it to go. And it's automatic for Nelson Caputo on that left side. He's been knocked down, man. He's been knocked down this whole tournament. Shooting at a high percentage from three ball. Ooh. Oh, that gets a hand on it there. Yeah, he got away with one Caputo right there. Because we heard that all the way from here. Balls inbounds by Dixon. Almost turnover. Here's number 23. All the way! Josie Thomas! And I'll tell you, the raw athleticism on this Eastern Commerce team is making a huge difference right now. Great coaching job by the staff of Eastern to not give up, instill confidence in his in the roster. And Josie Thomas there attacks, cuts it again to just eight. So St. Mike can't seem to get past this hump here. You know, now a seven point lead. Back to seven again. The press is on. Let's see if St. Mike's can handle it. They're having a little bit of trouble with it. Julian Grant. Dead ball. Back out to Jurisic. 
Caputo pulls up for three. Oh my! He is on Nelson. the money. Caputo is feeling it. And the scouts that are in the gym are writing in their notes feverishly right now because Caputo's showing it all out there. And again, as we mentioned earlier, in the building right now from the NCAA, we got Duquesne University, Fairfield, and Western Michigan. That's a lot of schools in the building as well as Canadian schools. The lead is back up to 10 after that three by Caputo. And Caputo could have went to the basket on that play, but he decided, hey, I'm going to pull up. I'm feeling it. That was a really serious heat check right there. Juricic kicks it out. Julian Grant put on the line. No good. Oh, rebound over the back. And Nelson right. lets it go again. Caputo, that's another heat check. Here's McDonald, pushes it. McDonald goes like all the way up, misses it. And a foul over the back. Cadre Gray over the back of Jurisic. Coaches on Eastern are imploring their guys to rebound. And Josie Thomas getting a break here. Plugging in Delon Jemo. And Narcisse Ambanza will get back in the game. Gula Osman coming out. And one thing you got to give Osman is for is the braids. He's got those braids going on. They're very tightly woven. <laughs> <laughs> Danilo at the line. Makes one. Solid free throw shooter. Looks like he's growing by the minute. He makes the second. 35-23 from a seven point lead back up to 12, just like that. Inside, oh, Danilo with the send away on Jemot. And we're winding down here in the second quarter. Just one minute to play. Marcus Carr pulls for three. No good. And it'll go to Eastern. Let's talk a little bit about Danilo. I mean, really, he's not a big man of center, but he's inside playing that big man position and he gets at every ball. Shoot, Drew, if you want to talk about Danilo, we can talk about him for the rest of the game if you really want to. But, we wouldn't um, need to do the broadcast, would we? But Danilo, this, is a, this is a beauty in his game. He has a good all-around feel regardless of what position you play him at. He defends multiple positions, and he'll score in the low post, high post, knows how to break down with guys. Really, I don't, I don't think we've truly seen everything that he has to offer yet because he hasn't really got a, an opportunity to play on the perimeter as much. Now, if you inject another big man into the St. Mike's roster and you move Danilo to the three, that's when you truly get a, a, a glimpse or an indication of exactly what he has to offer. Oh, and, and a turnover. turnover. Here comes Dixon back. Julian Grant on him, in the middle. Floater, no good. Kadri Gray could not get that floater to go. 1.6 seconds left. It's a 12-point gap, 35-23 for St. Mike's. Inbounds up top, 34 shoots it. No good, that was a miss by Delon Jemot. And there, there you have it, the first half is officially over. It's 35-23. Eastern Commerce facing a 12-point deficit in this ball game. Stay tuned for the second half. You're watching the web stream by Ill Minds Media, North Pole Hoops, and On Point Basketball.
The action is intense here to start the second half. 35-23. You're watching the webcast of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. St. Mike's with the 35-23 lead at the half. They are going right to left in the blue jerseys. Eastern Commerce is going left to right in the white jerseys. Nice dish, Caputo inside. Beautiful finish by Abby Wright, who starts the second half for St. Mike's. Narcisse and Banza with the pull up, no good. Danilo with the rebound to Carr, pass it up to Paradina. Almost looked like a walk there, but he got away with it as Dixon tried to defend. Here comes Dixon with it. Takes on Caputo, nice pass, baseline. And that's a beautiful play to Mbanza. Now Nelson Caputo, he's been, he's been good all around, not just scoring the three ball, but also you know, finding his guy off the dribble. Here he looks at Nicolo Pardina, who usually is set to launch. We've seen him attack the basket a little more this year. Oh, Paradina can't get it to go, but Juricic is right there for the putback. Such a versatile player, does it all for this St. Mike's team. In the wing, Eastern can't get it to go, but a rebound inside, number 12 gets it, misses. And somebody got hurt there. Looks like Cadre Gray. Subbing out will be Padre Gray. Coming in will be Cosine Simpson. A little bit of a mishap on the ankle, it seems. And that's not good for Eastern Commerce. Cadre Gray is one of their leading scorers. Had 22 in the first one, 18 in the second. Jason McDonald being up Marcus Carr, the young phenom, St. Mike's. Ambidextrous dribbler who can go left or right over to Caputo. Danilo Juricic. Oh, ball gets tapped away. Here comes Dixon. And Danilo again with the incredible block. And he's just on the ground. Look at Danilo Juricic. And a putback. Uh, he Simpson. And he never says n die on a play. You just got to love that about Danilo Juricic. He needs a sub, though, right now after that play. Thank goodness for Cushions behind the backboard because I tell you, there was a time when we played and there was no cushion behind the backboard. <laughs> you know, Danilo's all right, seemed to have, to have tweaked his ankle there. A big piece, they'll need him in the finals. What and in this game, this game's far from over. Far from over, what an effort though. Dixon was looking back saying, let me see if I can take this guy and still he's got the length, uh, you know, six, seven length as well as an arm you know, reach to get over there. Even though he was behind, he still managed to staple that off the glass. And that'll be his third block of the game. We, we, we should be keeping stats because he's probably got at least 10 to 15 so far. In, um, over in, the tournament, in for the sure, tournament, yes. For sure. Oh, nice pull up. McDonald uses his quickness. Easter needs him to kind of break out right now and put some points in the basket. Especially Caputo, with Cadre out now. Caputo, a hesitation dribble, down low. Oh, nice move, and just like that, Abby Wright comes out with two buckets to start the second half. So long, Abby Wright, at 6-4. Here comes Simpson, a little out of control. Dixon on the inbounds. McDonald comes out. And here's McDonald. Face left, goes right, and oh, just misses the rebound. Looks like a foul called on Marcus Carr as Ambanza tries to get the putback to go, but can't. Ball's inbounded by Ambanza. Dixon's got it. 
Caputo steps up, full man to man. Got to watch out for the five seconds here. Sings it over to McDonald, up top, up top to Mbanza. Looks for the pull up. It's good Can't to see. It to it's go. good to see Eastern being really patient on their possessions here. Narcisse looked for for the right moment to slash there. Yeah, they're running some offense, and they, you know, benefited from that with the free throws coming for Josie Thomas. 45-27, though, an 18-point bulge as St. Mike's is in control with 5:03 left in the third quarter. Thomas hits the first free throw, cuts it to 18. Here comes Jurisic back in for Paradina. Can't get it to go, it's still 17. Full court press again. This gave St. Mike some trouble in the first half. Julian Grant with it. Timeout, St. Mike. Coach Downer does not like what he sees there on the press break. And you're tuned to the webcast of the 20 Father Henry Carr Classic. My name is Drew Banks, Mon Point Basketball alongside Tar Elias Viet of North Pole Hoops. And of course, all the technical and superior camera work done by Illmind's Media. And St. Mike's is still in the timeout in the huddle. They're coming back out. Meanwhile, Eastern Commerce ready to try to get back into the ball game. Here we are, Danilo inside. Oh, anywhere you look at it, that's a mismatch. And he just makes people pay. Oh, glad he's back, man. Glad he's back in the one piece. This young man has got a, such a bright future. In the Basketball. He's going to be a pro player at some point if that's what he chooses to be. 2018's finest, man, and he's a clever kid too. Academically Look very sound. You know, he's at, he's at about an, an 82, 80, between 82 and 85 academic average. So, I mean, he takes care of business with the books and on the floor. And, it, and no doubt he's still growing. Still a young player. Of course, we noted he's in grade 10. <laughs> He was a grade nine stalwart last year and he's only gonna get better. Could you imagine by the time grade 12 rolls around, uh, you know, I'd like to see him really get some isolation and, and drive and, and, and just throw it down on people at some point. I, I don't know if that's his game so much, but he's versatile as you pointed out. In yeah, I mean, air, so. when we've seen him, when we've seen him in op when he's had opportunities to play more on the wing, you see a little bit more of his, you know, his rip and go, his jab, gets, gets guys, he's a very fundamental player, knows, you know, the, 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 the key elements to the game and takes advantage of it. And, and there you have it. Fundamental play, drive, and kick to Julian Grant, who buries the three. 50-29, not looking good for Easton right now, Elias. When you got Dixon there on the rebound, out to Josie Thomas. Oh, and Josie Thomas, that's the second and one play he's gonna make. Got a lot of strength on his body. 6'4", 190. Grade 12 er and he cuts the deficit to 50 to 31 with 355 left in the third. As if, if you're watching from home, first of all, thank you for tuning in, whether where, wherever you are, whether it's in Canada or international. And um, if you if you are one of the, the high school players here who are aspiring to play at the next level, take a look at the body language here of some of the St. Mike's guys, or actually the, the roster as a whole. You'll notice that regardless of the call made by the referees. They will give a nod and they will walk away. They will never, ever make contact, or verbal contact with the referees or, or show that there's a negative tone. I love that. I love to see that because in the previous semifinal, we got all of that. They, the players were not happy with the calls and they were talking to the referees and the referees were warning the players as well as the coaches. But Eastern, they really have a, a philosophy and, and that's get it done. Yeah, and just play the game. Here we got Kayon to the corner to Nelson. Caputo with the breakdown. Crowdy, DC! Crowdy! Crowdy! Julian Grant up top. Marcus Carr, not a good shot. Tough Watch shot. Man. Yeah, that's an in-betweener. Like, if you're going to shoot the three, take the three, or you're going to take a couple more dribbles. Finish that, and he got it. 
Oh, that looked good to me. I guess it's no NBA calls in this gym. Eastern Commerce looking for the continuation there. They won't get it. It'll be on the baseline. Narcisse will inbound. Narcisse unbinds on the inbound. And Kadre Gray still out of the game on the bench right now. Hope his ankle uh, is doing well. Hopefully it's not a, a tear or anything like that. Coach Kevin Jeffers is saying they missed two points. They missed two points the last possession. I thought they did too. I thought it was supposed to be 31 at one point, but uh, they're going to check it out right now. Drew Banks, Elias Biet on the call. The father, Henry Clark, early bird classic. Another block by Danilo Juricic, but picked up by Dixon. Thank you for rejoining us here. 50 to 33 is the score. St. Mike's leads with 3.30 left in the third quarter. Oh, nice tip there. And right inside, number 44, Kosin Simpson gets it to go. This press has been giving St. Mike's a bit of a problem this game. Well, I think this has been forcing it on the press. They got to realize it's a small court. You got a lot of time. The overhead passes have been really costing them. And there we got Nelson Caputo. He's still hot from the from the previous. He's on fire. He's four of six right now from three. Oh, good rebound by McDonald. Puts it up. Looked like a little bit of a foul, but no call. Jurisic passes it up front. Kedavong. Kedavong gets it stripped. Narcisse and Banza can't get it to go, and Ketavong got a little razzle there on the press. Good and here comes Caputo. Caputo. I'm not letting him have that easy bucket there. You don't want to give no, any momentum to the Eastern Commerce. They start to go on a roll. It could be uh, the floodgates could open for them. You know, and that's their third steal off the press there. Uh, St. Mike's is going to look to regroup here after this free throw. And the free throw is good. Ambanza makes the first. 17-point lead for St. Mike's. 2.42 left in the third quarter. The second semifinal. Oh, wow. High, high arc on that shot. Gets it to go. 53-27. Full court press now. Jurisic turns. See, I'd like to see Jurisic take on the defender there. Not just wait for Carr, but he's still playing fundamental basketball, even with a press on. Here comes Caputo. Swings it to the right side. Julian Grant back up top to Caputo. Caputo shifts it to Fed. Oh, what a feed. Three seconds. No. Looked like a foul there. Ref calls a push as Caputo drives. That would have been a bucket if they didn't call that.
53-37. Eastern Commerce facing a huge deficit. Danilo Juricic, that's money. Oh, usually that's money for him inside. Off his foot. Nelson Caputo. He's, he's, you're, you're right. He's actually really good from his outside shoulder getting off that, that baby hook. I mean, he's, the thing is with him, he's got it on both sides. Yeah, he's so ambidextrous, you know, can go both ways on the inside. Here comes Dixon, defended by Caputo to McDonald. Marcus Carr has him. And Banza with the high arc. Got it! And just like his free throw, super high arc, he makes a three, cuts it to 13. And although St. Mike's has had the lead for the entirety of the game, really been... Oh. Foul call. Looks like it's going against Eastern Commerce. Okay, we'll be inbounds by St. Mike's. Checking into the game is number 44. Jamal Abbey Wright coming out of the game is number 22, Colby Kedavong. Inbounds by Caputo. Inside to Danilo. Marcus Carr up top. Caputo doesn't want to give him the three right there. Is Simpson. Hand up. Caputo. Defended well. Julian Grant almost turns it over. Dixon on him. Dead, dead. Danilo. Oh my goodness. The money man. What a turnaround. That is so beautiful. You can't teach the skills Danilo Juricic has. Here comes Ambanza. Long three. No good. Rebound. Josie Thomas drives to the hoop. No foul. It's 55 40. St. Mike. With 105 left in the third quarter, Caputo with it, McDonald, Danilo with the screen, Abby Wright to kick it, Marcus Carr makes the three for Carr, and just like that, it's an 18-point lead again for St. Mike's Elias. Up and down game here, St. Eastern Commerce, you know, just trying to. Trying to stay alive in it, and on many occasions they have been. But um, the way that this third quarter is closing up, you know, a lot of momentum for St. Mike's here. Ambanza, another three ball there. Jason McDonald on the rebound. No, nope, that was short. Oh, rebound put back attempt by Ambanza. Can't go. Still remains Eastern Commerce ball. And we have yet to see the return of Cadre Gray. That sprained ankle really bothered him. He's testing it out out there, walking on the side. Doesn't look good. But you know what? They're going to need him. They're going to really, really need him throughout the season. It's better to take, as important as this game is, it's better to take, you know, take the time off and make sure that it's actually healthy before you're coming back on the floor. So true right there, Elias. And I'm Banza with the inbounds. Checking in for Eastern is Gula Ozman, number 11, with the Sterling Braids out there. Jason McDonald and Banza guarded by Carr takes him and again not a not a smart decision with Danilo Juricic inside Julian Grant with the rebound and that's it for the third quarter it's 58-40 St. Mike's in full control their lineup a stellar lineup a couple years ago off the champions as well we'll be right back with the fourth quarter you're watching the webcast of the 2014 Father Henry Carr early bird classic
Fourth quarter action at the Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic, 58-40. St. Mike still with the lead. Drew Banks on the call with Elias Biet of NorthPoleHoops.com. Thank you for joining us. And Nelson Caputo's got it. Elias, your thoughts on the game so far? I mean, obviously from the score, you can tell St. Mike's has been in control for the most part. A few runs made by Eastern Commerce, uh, just based off of their greediness, their greediness and their, you know, their willingness to, to battle through. Um, but now we're heading into the fourth quarter, 18-point lead. It's going to be hard to come to come back from, especially as we mentioned, uh, Cadre Gray out of the game. Um, Josie Thomas has been really good for them on the glass. However, you know the post presence of Danilo right now. Anytime they they come into the lane, nothing's easy for them. Danilo Jurisic with the putback. He's just unstoppable inside, and it's a 20-point gap, 60 to 40. St. Mike's and Banza, and he makes the three-point play. And maybe they still have some life left in them. One thing about Eastern is they're strong on the penetration, Elias. Yeah, and it's going to make, right now we got Delon Jamo uh, subbing in here. He may be, he may be able to kind of be the equalizer in terms of having, you know, Danilo in the post, maybe opening things up for his Eastern guys to, to, to penetrate further. Yeah, he's got some size inside. I mean, a big, big boy right there. And he makes the three-point play, 60-43. to 43. It's down to 17. There's Caputo, full-court press. They're going to trap. Julian Grant, so poised as well. And Julian Grant's a multi-sport athlete. Yes. Ball first. His father, Kareem. I know him well. And Banza, Kareem, I should say. And Banza can't get it to go. Dixon grabs it, picks it up. Two players collide. Uh. Dixon... Not a good shot. That's the shot we talked about. There's a rebound. Oh, big man's got to make that. A rush possession there right after you've secured a rebound and, you know, have an extra opportunity to put a bucket together. Jurisic fakes the shot, kicks it to Carr. Carr's not bashful. Takes the three, no good. Danilo inside, can't get it to go. Rebound. Trevor Hutton. Here's Ambanza. He's going to go with the floater. And he floats it in. 60-45. Eastern cuts it to 15. Full court press. The trap is on. Marcus Carr. The clock is ticking. There's Marcus Carr. Over to Caputo. Caputo is played by Dixon. Crosses him over. Drives to the hoop. Oh, almost makes it, but no good. Dixon. Osman. And Benza, he wants the three, high archer, high archer, and it's good! And we've seen three threes by Ambanza today. What a game he's playing. It's a 12-point lead, and here comes Eastern. Danilo behind the back. Almost a foul. Back to Caputo, and Jeff Zauner wants a timeout. 5.29 left in the game. The lead has been cut to 12, just like that, from 22 at one point. Such a frenzied basketball game so far, and it only seems like it's going to get even more frenzied towards the end. What a comeback. And Benza, what an arc on his shot there, Elias. I mean, he's really picked it up for this team. They, they needed someone to, you know, to, to handle the load on the offensive end, and he's been, he's been that guy. Yeah, he's been great. And, you know, the heart of a lion, the heart of a champion, the Eastern Commerce Saints, we've seen this for years, decades in fact, doesn't matter what position they're in. I remember a few years ago, uh, you know, they had Aaron on their team, Aaron Best, and it was the same thing. You, the, the games you thought they were down, uh, they, they somehow found themselves in it and ended up in the finals of tournaments they had absolutely no business being in. Yeah, well in this game as well, they've been down as much as 20, 22 even, and with five and a half minutes here, they're, they're down just 12. And uh, still battling to get to get a lead. They're not going to give up. That's for sure. Back to the action. Drewy Banks alongside Elias Biet. Here comes Carr, defended by the big man. Not a good matchup right there. Not sure if Eastern wants him up top. They needed to switch off there. And Carr, you know, such a smart player for a young player, realizing he had a big six-six player on him, decides to take him. And of course, the referee calls a foul. 
Jurisic in the corner. No trap right here. Julian Grant, been in the game, and here drives. There's it, there it is. Steps in, tries to take the charge, but turned a little bit to the side was McDonald, and he, he wanted to do the right thing there, but I think at the last second, he saw a football player coming at him inside in Julian Grant, and uh, not a good outcome there. It's back up to 14 with a chance to make it 15. And he misses the free throw, rebound is good by Jamat. Here comes Mbanza, does he want another three? Oh no, he pulls up, Dixon gives it to Dixon. Back to Mbanza, he, he wants that three, but they're not gonna give it to him this time. Fakes with a jab first, looking yes. to take Nelson here off the dribble. He's gonna pull it, you can see it. Oh my Lord! This man is sizzling, folks! <laughs> Four threes in the game! And it's now an 11 point lead. Oh, nice pass by Caputo. Jurisic, Julian Grant, not sure if that's a good shot. Rebound, Eastern Gang rebounds, picked up by 42. Hutton almost lost, back to Hutton. Gives it to McDonald. Back to Hutton. Hutton, no good. Dixon, and there's a push, I can see that. Dixon with the push, and again, they make a great play on defense and have a chance to cut it to single digits and they rush the shot. Not enough in the story of the game for them. Think about, think about how many chances they've had to reset and get a good shot off. About in this half alone, maybe four of those possessions and in a tight game like this. That's eight, eight, ten points, depending on if you hit a couple threes. In an 11 threes. point game. Four and a half minutes to go. St. Mike, 62-51. Marcus Carr bringing up the ball here against Jason McDonald. Here's Carr, went down the middle. Carr, with a drive, and boy, Carr is so crafty. Going left, switches it, going right, switches it up, goes left. And Banza, does he get another one? No, not this time. And rebound by Paradina, gives it to Carr. Carr with a quick shot, he better make that. No, doesn't do it. That, I don't think, is a shot that St. Mike's needs up 13. Here comes McDonald, and he gets it to go! And McDonald was not to be denied. Now we're seeing multiple pieces step up for Eastern Commerce here. You had Narcy Sambanza make a few threes in the second half. Jason McDonald there with the big play. The end one finish. And here we got Josie who's been Josie Thomas who's been big on the boards for them back in the game. Can you believe this could be a 10-point game if he makes this free throw, Elias? Got it. Nope, no good. Rebound, Ambanza, he's everywhere. Ambanza, he's everywhere. Showing the handles, kicks it out to Dixon. Dixon with the floater, can't get it to go. Hustle for it, good rebound inside by number 44, Abby Wright. Here comes Caputo, double teams coming for Caputo. Throws it wildly, gets it to Julian Grant somehow. Back to Caputo, you can't let him go left. Down, down low, oh, doesn't get it to go, no, on the putback. Oh, and a block, and that was Abby Wright not giving up on the play. And finally, the foul goes to 23, Josie Thomas. Eastern Commerce. Okay, here comes Dixon back in the action after the missed free throw. 65-53, St. Mike's pull up, got it. And that's a good shot right there on the floater for Dixon as Eastern quickly calls a timeout. It looks like a 30 second, a full timeout they want now. 65-55, 3.08 left. We're gonna try to get inside the huddle of the Eastern Commerce Saints here and get some audio for you. Coach. 
Coach Kevin Jeffers, you know, letting them go and telling their, their team, let's make it happen. Let's not say we're going to do something. Let's actually do it out there. We gave, got a rebound. He said they've got the size on us, but we have to rebound. Well, now, look, if we're looking at a team this early, like Eastern Commerce, and they're, they're keeping in a 10-point game with St. Mike's, you can only imagine what they're going to look like by the end of the season. They're going to be scary because they have, they have never say die attitude when they're playing. Here's the full court press. East to the left side. Carr, Carr with the floater over to Caputo. Caputo calls for help. Double teams coming. Caputo throws it wide. Paradina, Paradina on the wing. Carr, calling for the double team. Paradina, Carr. Here comes Dixon. Double team Caputo. And this is where you need the shot clock in the in the high school game in Ontario. Because you're gonna have that one team. You're gonna have one team that's gonna try to hold and waste time instead of getting multiple possessions to give the other ch team a chance to win the game. And Jason McDonald there, active hands on Marcus Carr in the corner, picks up a steal. And Marcus Carr picks up a foul. He'll send Jason now to the line for two. That's two that, no-nos right there that St. Mike's didn't want to commit. And, and you know, on Eastern's end, this is what you want. You want to get points while the, while the clock is stopped in a 10-point game, two and a half minutes left. St. Mike's 65-55. As you see there, Jason McDonald makes his first. Now let's see if he can cut it to eight. Violation on number 23, Thomas. The basket is no good. It's still in nine point balls. As a violation is called. There's a full court press. Carr, Julian Grant. Dribbles through it, such a great ball handler. Double teams on, time on. St. Mike, the only thing Julian Grant did wrong there is stop his dribble right by half. He could have dribbled a little bit even further, uh, you know, and got trapped with the, with the center line, of course. And another timeout called, timeout in the play. I believe St. Mike's has one more timeout left here in the fourth quarter in Eastern Commerce for two. Again, it's a nine-point game in the second semifinal here between Eastern Commerce and St. Michael's. Nine-point game, yep. 222 left. 222, we got time. It's, it's a ball game. I mean, it looked like it was going to be a 30-piecing by St. Mike's. 30-piecing, haven't heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, Nelson Caputo, I've been told, has 17 points for St. Mike's, one of the leaders. Oh, and a turnover by St. Mike's. Here's Dixon, McDonald, can't get it to go. Oh, that's a big miss. Here's Paradina, not sure if they want him dribbling down there. Oh, he dribbled right into the trap, but somehow got out of it. Oh, that is dangerous. Tanillo, always so fundamental. Fakes the shot and drives by as McDonald flies over the top of it. And that was a crucial miss on the other end by Eastern. They could have cut it to a seven point lead, maybe six, but they miss it and in turn, St. Mike's comes right back and are at the line with Danilo Juricic going for two shots. Now had Nikola, or sorry, had De Juricic put up that shot, he would have had a good chance at blocking that shot there. McDonald's got some serious ups for a, for a five nine point guard. Serious ups is right. Apparently they fouled out. Jason McDonald has five fouls and is fouled out of the game. That's a big, 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 big miss loss. for them. 
Jurisic with the first free throw, it's good. Second one is no good. Here comes Ambanza, fakes the three, kicks it. Dixon, no good, that's short. St. Mike's has it at a 10 point lead, 154 left in the ball game. Julian Grant on the inbounds. Jurisic to Grant. Back to Caputo. Jurisic shows his handle. Caputo, Jurisic. Carr. Carr drives, can't get it to go. Julian Grant can't get the rebound. Dixon picks it up. Up front. Josie Thomas. Oh, and another block by Danilo. You just have to realize who you're going up against and go the other way. But they're not really using their smarts there, going trying to go up against Danilo Juricic in the middle. And Danilo there picks up his fifth block of the game to go along with his 19 points and probably two handfuls of rebounds. This guy's a walking double-double. He's been doing it everywhere on the court. And the thing is, we haven't really seen him carry the rock up, but you can see he's got the skills to do that as well. Right now, it would have to be between Danilo and Nelson for player of the game. And maybe co-players of the game because they're both playing so well. And stick, stick with us after the game as we'll have Nelson Caputo here for, in for an interview. Free throws good, 66-57, a minute 13 left in the ball game. Eastern Commerce calls a timeout, a full timeout. F please stay tuned, you're watching the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. We'll be right back after this short break. Live action, St. Mike's with the inbounds. This is the second semifinal. St. Mike's ahead, 66-57. Julian Grant almost turnover. Ketabom, Jurisic, back to Caputo. Dries, pulls it back. Jurisic, Grant, Caputo. Kicks it, Ketabom. And that's the guy you foul. I think you gotta foul 22, I mean, of all the other guys on the floor, you probably want to foul 22. Is his Ketabong, a grade nine player? That should have been a no-brainer. If I'm a coach, I'm putting the young guy on the line and seeing if he can really step up in this situation. Now you definitely he, don't want to foul number three and number 31. Now we've seen this young, we've seen this youngster hit some pretty big shots, but now it's under pressure. We'll, we'll see what he can do here. There you have it. Uh, there you have it. You've got to have certain things in your game plan. Maybe I got to get back into coaching one day. Oh, and almost a turnover there. And that's careless handling of the basketball, 66-57. Had a chance to cut it to six points and doesn't get it to drop. Okay, St. Mike's with it again. It will be a full court press by Easter, no doubt. 
Julian Grant with it. Caputo. Dixon has him and has to foul. And as you can see, Coach Jeff Zauner did the thing that we thought he would do, and he subbed out the freshman, the grade nine player, because he knows he's probably not ready for prime time. That's Ketabong. Brings in Abby Wright, who's played a pretty good game himself. Beautiful form on that free throw. Nelson Caputo, such a leader on this team. Now that he has no Godwin Bourne in anymore, he's really stepped up to become the de facto captain of this squad. And of course, Danilo Juricic is a solid co-captain as well. Marcus Carr can't prevent the drive. Dixon and another timeout. Nine point lead, this is like an NBA game. The longest minute so far, but you gotta make use of your timeouts. We're so glad you could join us here at the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. It's brought to you by Illmines Media, North Pole Hoops and On Point Basketball. And your thoughts so far on what Eastern can do, Elias, to try to make a miracle out of this with 35.8 seconds left. I mean, there's going to be a lot of fouls called in this next 35 seconds. I don't think that there's an... Semi-final, the second semi-final is over. The finals are set. Make sure to tune in at five o'clock for the bronze medal game and then 6.30 for the gold medal game. And if we can bring you this game, we will at some point bring you a little stream at some point in this Constellation final as well as a bonus. Stay tuned, we're gonna, we're gonna bring in Nelson Caputo. We're gonna talk to Nelson about the games that just took place and get his thoughts on the final where his team will see the Thornhill Thunder.
All right, welcome back here. We're after the second semifinal. St. Mike's defeats Eastern Commerce. Elias Viet with me, of course. Nelson Caputo, number three for St. Mike. Danilo Duricic for St. Mike's as well. Guys, first off, Danilo, tremendous game by you. I mean, you're not only doing it offensively, but defensively, you're a force in there. Talk about the way you play defense and the blocks. I think we counted between five and six blocks in that game. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, defense wins games, so you gotta put your body on the line and take block shot or take a charge. It's the most important thing for the team. In terms of your teammate here, Nelson, what does he bring to the table with you guys and, and the chemistry that you both have? He's a floor general. He's the most experienced guy on the team. He can handle the rock, make really good passes for easy buckets, so to have him on the team. Okay, we're going to take it here to Nelson Caputo. Nelson, you finished with 20 points in the game, also had three steals. Um, the three balls really fallen for you. So, so you know, over the summer, we've, we've noticed great pro projection in your game. Um, what have you done in the offseason to really take your game to the next level? You know, um, on the offseason, I really try to play with guys older than me to get experience so I could be ready for the season and uh, just to handle pressure. And I know um, playing with older guys, if I can bang with guys like like Malcolm and guys been at the collegiate level already. I feel like the high school basketball isn't going to be as tough. It's going to be tough, but I feel like I could bring more of a veteran approach to the game. Okay, and now with Godwin, with Godwin leaving this year, you got Marcus, who's a, another big piece that steps up. Yeah. Um, how do you feel? How do you feel he fits into the dynamic? And you know, is is he is he just reaching his potential, or you know, is there more to see from him? Um, I, as I tell him, I tell these guys every day, Marcus. And even scratch their surface so if you guys are impressed with them now just wait to see what they have in the future as a point guard I'm just trying to lead the floor and there's really there's really trying to develop them and mentor them to get them into that into that mind frame and but and really trying to get them to buy into the system and believe that they can be uh, uh, hopefully pros one day and I know that they can be pros they just got to get that in their mind and just keep developing them and I'm just trying to be there for them and get them, get them prepared for when I leave they can take over and mentor the young guys. Okay, and final question here. From what you guys have seen in the tournament so far, this is for both of you guys. Who do you feel is the toughest competition yet? We'll start with Danilo. Uh, I think uh, for me, it's ourselves. We gotta play the way we gotta play and no one can stop us. That's my opinion. I can definitely agree with what he's saying. To me, I don't really look at the matchups and who we're playing. I just focus on our team because uh, when we're a click on all cylinders, I don't think there's a team out there that could beat us, uh, and uh, and if we lose, there's only going to be us to blame. Okay, and sorry, one more question. We're going to go to one more question here. It was a very emotional um, last game last year at Offs. A lot of frustration. Yeah. You guys shot the three ball, stuck with shooting the three ball, and yeah. it didn't. You know, it wasn't just wasn't falling that night. Yeah. In those situations, has coach talked about what the game plan is? Are you gonna are you gonna live and die by it, or is there a rearranged plan? Oh, definitely. We got we got some tricks in our we got some tricks up our sleeve. Okay, let's keep it short and sweet. Is, when the trade ball isn't working, which is, I don't think is going to happen too often this year. Okay, there you have it. We're here at the Father Henry Carr Early Bird with Danilo Djuricic and Nelson Caputo. Stay tuned. We're going to be back with the stream. The final is going to be a barn burner. Thornley versus St. Mike's. Please stay tuned later on for the rest of the webcast. Thanks for joining us.
We're live on point. It's Drew E. Banks. Sorry, boss. Uh, Mike is saying text now. Oh, no, no, not yet. But I was tardy with that. Not at that point. Now it is. Okay. Oh, I didn't want to miss you guys. Oh. The action is about to start in the bronze medal game at the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. It's St. Edmund Campion in the gold uniforms taking on the Eastern Commerce Saints in their traditional black uniforms. My name is Drew Banks, alongside Elias Biet of North.com. I am from OnPointBasketball.com bringing you the stream for the 2014 Early Bird Classic. This one should be pretty interesting, Elias. Uh, and the rest of the games, if you want to make a quick comment on the last two games that we broadcast, that would be appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the last two games, those are two teams, Father Henry Carr and DeVille, that we expected to see uh, deeper into the tournament. Um, they ended up playing in the Constellation game, and, you know, the atmosphere in here was as if it was the final game. Um, Damien Prehay came up with a clutch plays down the stretch, uh, finished with 19 points, a handful of rebounds and steals as well. And on, on Father, they got a lot of um, a lot of tape to go over, a lot of reviewing to do, uh, to get that offense really in the swing of things. Most definitely. All right, we'll live live action here. Starting lineups number ten. Marcus Marcus Anderson, number thirteen, C J Bennett. Let's go through the line here. Three, Quinton Hamilton. Number 11, Joel Brown, and number 24, Dylan Gregory. For that Eastern, is... we have number five, Jason McDonald, number five, Dwight Dixon, number 33, Narcisse Ambanza, number 34, Dilan Jamat, and number 23, Josie Thomas. Now, this is interesting. We got Joel Brown, a ninth grader, starting for Campion here. And it's an interesting choice by Coach Omar Miles. Um, he's, he's been getting mentored by Marcus Anderson for, the, for the, quite some time now in the preseason. And uh, he's given him an opportunity here. That's what he's got to see it as. Playing defense here on Dixon in the corner. Here we go. Rebound, Anderson, he's got it, pushes it forward. Bennett on the right side, can't get it to drop. Rebound, Thomas. Oh, pushed out of bounds there is Dixon by been Joel Brown and that's an unforced turnover there or unforced foul that is well, typically I would say DeVille usually has stronger teams in Campion but the way around just strictly based off of the composure level of these guys they seem very under control and and a, and a little more mature great points and here's McDonald he's got it he's going right using the screen defended by Gregory he spins the other way comes back can't get it to drop. Rebound inside. Number 23 picks it up. And that's Josie Thomas for the bucket. And Eastern takes the 2-0 lead. Joel Brown stops near midcourt. Nice pass. And to Gregory. Fakes the shot. Drives. No foul. Bennett. Tough hoop. Finishes Gets with the draw. Contact there. Looks like they got something out of nothing on that play. Banza dribbling up at the top, pulls up, floater, no good. How about that three point, three point performance by Mbanza? That was the high arc on those shots, whether it was his free throws or the three pointers. Uh, he just came to play that game. His Inside. release point, his release point is clear. It, you know, it's tough to block a shooter that releases that high. And that's what you teach them. Have a high release point. Thomas with the bucket. Here comes Hamilton. No good. A little bit wild. Not really with purpose on that drive. And we've seen that several times from him this tournament. Here comes McDonough inside. No, the big man. You can't miss those bunnies if you're inside. Caught with the miss. Pull up. Got it. Has there been a more 
player than Bennett for this team? Oh, I mean, he's doing it inside. He's doing it outside, communicating, playing defense. Here comes Bennett. Right side. Looks over Ambanza, defended by Bennett. Bennett slides his feet. Ambanza kicks it over. Th Thomas. Thomas back to Dixon. Defended by Brown. Dixon uses the screen by Jamal. Jamat slides, no pass. Here comes Dixon, kicks it outside to McDonald. McDonald spins by Anderson. Pull up, no good. There is Dixon, tries to get it back inside. Anderson's got it behind the back. Anderson pushes it forward to Gregory. Over to Bennett, fakes the shot and drives. Kicks it. And here's Brown on the drive. Bennett, Bennett, no good. Jamat gets in the way of that. Here's Ambanza. He's certainly looking to slow it down. Playing the half court set. Both of these teams really, you know, getting off early trying to push the ball, but they're gonna need to, to set something up here and slow. 4 4 ball game and a nice pick and roll. And Banza gets down and scores the layup. And he's picking up right where he left off last game. Oh, spin. That's great move right there by Dylan Gregory. And he's still looking to get a track in this tournament been a bit choppy in his play so far I mean he's pretty new to basketball he's a he's a he's a rock um, he's got the athleticism it's just a matter of putting together a skill set that's gonna allow him to thrive at the position three first and Jamon again with another bunny and he has to be frustrated right now cannot get it to go no matter what he tries he can't get it to go And here we go, back in the action. McDuff for Eastern Commerce in their final season of basketball. The school is closing down, unfortunately. A lot of legendary players and coaches coming out of that program. While we're on the, the topic of you know their, their status and where they stand, a guy you know that, that played for Eastern doing big things right now at Northwest Kansas Tech, uh, James Sylvester, you know picking up a few offers early this year, um, looking like a mid-major prospect at this point. For, for any coaches who are watching right now at the NCAA Division I level, James Sylvester in his sophomore year at Northwest Kansas. Well, so what kind of offers is he looking at? Um, right now it's uh, UNC Wellington, um, as well as a few others can't re recall off the top of my But people are definitely checking him out. I mean, he had one of the most lethal mid-range pull-ups in does. high school basketball Still does. You know, that I've seen. It's a lost art, to be honest with you. Break down the defense and pull up. And there is number 31 in the game, Elijah Charles. He has checked in for Campion and scores. Also in the game is Devontae Daniels, number 30 for Campion. And Eastern patient. And Banza with the pull up high arc. No good. Rebound. Daniels throws it away. McDonald. High he is, even after the jump shot. Now we mentioned earlier his vertical leap is quite impressive. Here's Joel Brown. Oh, crossover and back with a layup. And that's a young, talented player right there with the crossover. And his defender shaking him and scoring. Here comes Mbenza down the right side, kicks it outside, number 44. Can't get it to drop, and that's Cosin Simpson. Rebound comes out to and he puts it in. 11 10 Easter. Here's Brown. Brown gets it to go. The youngster's making, making the most of his minutes. I'd like to see a little bit more of that from him. He's got the talent. You know, he's trying to feel his way around, though. Obviously, there's more veteran players on this team. Here's McDonald. Doesn't get it to go. Anderson grabs it, spins for De Bruyne. Oh, back to Anderson. Good look there. Great record. By the young Joel Brown, seeing his trailer, giving it back to Anderson. Anderson gets to the line for two here. That's a beautiful play. You love to see your young players unselfish, uh, not forcing it, making the right play. Even though he was closer to the basket, there was an easier play to find Marcus Anderson. Oh, and Marcus misses the first free throw.
Second one is good. And the coaching staff here for Campion to up on uh, Joel Brown or, or sub off Anderson. And it's going to be Anderson coming out. They're talking about his confidence to really come out in this game here. All right, back to the action. It's Dixon, carries it down the right side, defended by Brown, kicks it over to 44. That's Simpson. No good. And then a foul. Offensive foul there, 23 gets called. That's Joseph. Coach Omar Miles imploring, imploring to shoot the ball when he's open. And point guard duties are the rookie. Grade nine, Joel Brown over to Dan. And it goes back the other way. This is the bronze medal matchup. Who gets third place? Third place is on the line between Eastern Commerce and Black going left to right. And can to left in goal. And there you have it, Ambanza still playing well for Eastern. As they ties the game up at 13 all. Oh, turnover right here by Champion and Benza, and he throws it down with the left hand. Narcisse now has 10 of Eastern Commerce's 15 points. Come to play. All tournament, he's been doing it, getting it done. Here's Brown over to Hamilton. Hamilton behind his back, loses it, fooling around with it. Here's Ambanza again around the back, dishes it off, no good. Simpson, Thomas, no good. And that's an offensive. And that's a Benz a little bit eager there and over the back of CJ Bennett. Look at the pace so far. I mean, it's a 15 13 game, 41 seconds left. Does it favor any team right now? I mean, I think Jason McDonald for Eastern Commerce is, is, knows when to slow it down, knows when to speed it up. If you're coming off of a defensive board, and you know, and you already see your guys on the outlet, then it's a good time to push. But he's he's recognizing when not to. So, oh, right now, turnover by Brown. Perfect situation. Exactly what we're talking about. You want to play in the open court here. Missed by Thomas. Rebound by and Charles. Now, see, this is the transition that we're talking about. This is where it needs to slow down. And Dylan Gregory, the first instinct that he had there was to attack the middle of the court. He's he's got that back out. And, and get the offense set up. He's got two point guards on the floor between Marcus Anderson and Joel Brown. Perfect time to bring the ball out, set up, and get, get reconstructed. Exactly, reorganized there. Subs come in. Joel Brown out, number 15. And uh, Kavon Tuzelin is in. Yep. Little break, little break, little break. Four miles messing around with the referees here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to action here. 31, nice drive. Can't get it. Oh, and Marcus Anderson almost puts the Charles miss in the back of the basket. And then it's a turnover by Kavon Tuzalin. Ten player, so. Here's McDonald, almost gets it to go. And after one quarter, it's 15-13. Eastern Commerce leads in the broadcast. It's Drew Ebanks alongside Elias Spiet. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after this short break and starting the second quarter.
second quarter of the bronze medal match between St. Edmund Campion in gold and Eastern Commerce. 15-13 after one, Eastern with the lead and we're back in the fold. CJ Bennett with it for Campion. Kavon over to Anderson. Tuzalin up top. He's a young grade 10 player. A little crossover against Osman, but he can't finish. A little out of control there, lost his feet under him. And here comes Thomas with the rebound. Over to McDonald, the floor general for Eastern. Guarded by Simpson. That's Simpson, drives into traffic. And you could call that with your eyes closed. And he's driving into no man's land right there. And Campion with it. 7.23 left in the second quarter. Here comes Gregory. Gregory on the drives left-handed. And he finishes. And good. I like the way he protected the ball there on the entry. He kind of held it by his hip, closed in. That little, running back, finish. that little running back move there if you're playing football. The foul is on uh, 42. Hutton. And, and Gregory seems to be kind of finding a little bit of a, a room to operate in this game. He's had some frustrations, but I believe he's got about five or six points right now. I'm playing well for uh, champion number 24, Dylan Gregory. Yeah, Dylan's, uh, Dylan's a freestyle player. When, when he gets some space to operate, that's when you'll see him thrive. So he can create off the dribble a little bit. Still working on developing some, some moves, you know, to get space. But as soon as he sees that opening, he's looking to attack the hoop. Bounds to Marcus Anderson. And Anderson is defended by Simpson to the right side. Gregory comes up, defended by 42. Hutton. Bennett, fake. No. Oh, what a rebound by Gregory. Got up there. 31 puts it in. Elijah Charles follows it up. And that's a nice play by Campion right there. Dylan Gregory now with four rebounds in the game. Here comes McDonald going left, defended by Anderson. Oh, and a foul. Unnecessary foul there. Kavon Tuzalin. No need to foul. Speed from the basket. Subs coming in for Eastern. Number 33, Ambanza. And number 30. Coming out is number 44, Simpson. And number 11, Austin. Inbounds Ambanza to Dixon. And if you get a chance to glance into the bleachers, you'll notice there's a lot of the teams that, that lost, that stayed behind to watch these teams and kind of get an evaluation for themselves for the next time they meet. A lot of these teams in this tournament here, the Father Henry Carr Early Bird, will be competing next week at the Humber Classic, also a major tournament on the year. Yeah, it's some, some scouting that's going to be going on for sure. Oh, and two misses. First, Bennett misses, and then Charles misses. And then Easter comes back, and Ambanza on the offensive glass, and he's having himself some kind of tournament for Eastern. Mama told him to clean up his own trash, and that's exactly what he did there, man. Followed up, rebound, put back. Yeah, great hustle there by Ambanza. Here's Champion up the other way. Dylan Gregory, Charles, get it to drop. Rebound, Anderson kicks it to Bennett. Bennett drives and out of control. You gotta get rid of that early. You had him under the basket there for, for an assist. Yeah, simple play right there that he kinda bobbled and ran right over McDonald for the unforced foul on that play. Here comes the Eastern Commerce Saints. It's Dixon bringing the rock up. Defended Brown over to the wing. That's Hutton inside. Thomas, McDonald, Thomas on the right side, drives around and somehow manages the circus shot on the baseline. And Eastern is ahead, 19-18, five minutes per second. And that ball comes loose from, from Marcus Anderson there, Narcisse getting his hand inside. Narcisse now with his uh, first foul of the game. And it looks like Hamilton is going to sub in, number 23. 
Or Campion. Let's see. Take out. He takes out number 31, Elijah Charles. Anderson at the 1919 ball game. Puts it up and he gets it. 2019 he gains the lead. Here comes Dixon going right side, defended by Brown. Brown. Here's Dixon. Crossover. Tries to dish underneath for Thomas and somehow they snake it through and get the bucket, Elias. That was a pretty nifty play. I'd say so. And here's Brown. Kicks it over to Gregory. Gregory wants it. You can see he's getting excited. And he throws it in. And he, he is in rhythm. First time all Gregory in rhythm for Campion. You know, I'm a, I'm a little hard on him at times. He definitely is in rhythm right now. You know, just some, some, some glitches to work on in terms of control and shot selection. But other than that, I mean, he's looking really good today. You're right, shot selection is the key when you're at this level. You've got to take good shots and maximize every possession. And here's action. Brown kicks it out to Anderson, and we haven't seen that a lot this tournament. Anderson drains the three. Champion, the 25-21 lead with 3.57 sec left in the second quarter. Jason McDonald looking to slow things down here in the half-court set. Drives and dishes. Oh! This is off the glass. Dixon. I don't know if he called that, but he still gets credit for three points. Here comes Bennett. Nice drive, and he's fouled. Thomas just couldn't resist and had to chip him on the side of the head. C.J. Bennett will go to the line, shooting two. 30-second timeout called by Eastern. And let's see if we can get into this timeout from the Campion bench. doing with our intensity and we can continue doing that, all right? All right? Defense is good, okay? When a man beats the, when a man beats a man off dribble, there has to be help. There has to be help, okay? And help is hands straight up in the air and take that charge. Not sideways, straight up. That was your charge. All right? Just stand straight up. All right? All right? Hey, hands in. There you have it. The coach is talking about doing the right thing in terms of defense for Campion. If they're going to take the charge, they have to be square. Uh, if not, they're going to get called for the block. So great points there for sure from the Campion coaching staff. Back to the action. C.J. Bennett at the line. Two free throws. First one, no good. Second one, no good. And Banza corrals a rebound on defense for Easter and pushes up to McDonald who doesn't see a streaking Simpson. Here's McDonald looking inside, bad pass, picked off by Brown. Brown, very crafty point guard. He's one of the point guards of the future for Canada, no doubt and pass it over and not a good play by Brown to give it to Hamilton in that spot. Just not a good spot for him to get the rock. And Yossi Storm is out right now for a sub. He's Eastern's leading scorer and the game's leading scorer. And here's Ambanza, goes right, almost loses it, saves it, McDonald picks it up. Defended by Hamilton, that's a mismatch right there. They gotta take advantage of the speed of McDonald. He turns on him, puts it up, and charge. McDonald, and just like I pointed out in the, in the huddle, the campaign coaches were saying, you got to step up and take those charges on those drives, and you have to be square. And Bennett, one of the leaders, gets it done. Well, you know what? One of the, defend the defenders there in the, in the low post knew that there was a mismatch opportunity and that he was going to drive. So they, you know, they took the chance and set up early and luckily got the charge. That's a great play, and Bennett can't make the basket. Here comes McDonald, and the big man finally makes that hoop. He's been inside and had some opportunities. Dylan Jamot 
finally makes a bucket inside and puts Eastern ahead again, 26-25 with 2.39 left in the second quarter. Here comes Jamat at the line. And he gets it, very good looking free throw for the big man. Here comes Anderson back for Campion. Anderson over to Hamilton, a little bit out of control, back to Anderson, swings it to Gregory in the corner. Gregory goes baseline, tries to drive. It rebounds to Anderson. Hamilton kicks it to Gregory, who wants the shot. No good, Bennett, and a travel. Took a little hop there after the rebound. I don't know if I've ever seen this many travel calls in, a, in one major tournament as I have this year. They're, they just don't seem to be in sync. I know it's early, but it, you know, just plays like that. You corral the rebound, it should be easy enough not to travel on that. I, th I thought that was another one there, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, almost in, and Banza, but he can't get it to go. Kickball, I can see that. And that was Jabot, it went off his foot, and referee had to call kick. 27-25, Eastern leads it with 159 left in the second quarter. And Coach Jeffers for Eastern not happy at all with that call. They're a loose ball and they're all going for it. And a kick was called. Here's Hamilton, no good. And Banza grabs the rebound, goes full court. Oh, no defense. Goes right around Cassian. Too easy for Amante. Too easy. Here comes Anderson, pushing the pace. Gives it off baseline to Brown. Brown to, oh my goodness. That is Brown. an incredible feel there. <laughs> Made something out of nothing on that play. Turned around and flicked it up with his left. Man, he's so talented. Uh, in the next few years, it's gonna be great to see him develop into a high caliber basketball player and point guard. Well, I mean, it's, it's just in time too. You got Marcus Anderson graduating soon. Who better to fill in than Joel? Here comes McDonald for Eastern. Kicks it. Thomas, no good. Eastern can't get it. And Banza spins. And the lefty, no good. Bounces out. Joel Brown. Got it right here. Coming down the left side. Hamilton. Fakes the three, defended by Ambanza. Over to Gregory, he wants a shot, fakes it. Euro step, and flips it up and under. Like we said, Gregory is finding his rhythm in this game, and he looks very good out there for Campion. 29-29 with 26 seconds to go. Here's Dixon, defended by Anderson. Ambanza on the switch. This, He's is, the got guy, this is the guy you want to take the last shot. Anderson moving his feet, sliding. Very good defense, switches off. McDonald, Jamat, McDonald, defended by Gregory. Great dish inside, oh my goodness. Dixon scores the bucket, 31-29. Eastern takes the lead into the half on that play. They made something out of nothing right there, Elias. Good read there by Jason McDonald, finding Dixon underneath. And as we go to a break, we'll be right back in a few minutes. 31-29 in the bronze medal matchup between St. Edmund Campion and Eastern Commerce. Eastern leads it at the break. We'll be right back after a few moments. We're tuning into the webcast brought to you by Ill Minds Media, North Pole Hoops, and All Point Basketball.
The action is starting to pick up here at the bronze medal game between Eastern Commerce and Campion. 38-35, Campion leads it. Third quarter action, and we've seen it go back and forth in the last couple minutes, Elias. Yeah, right now, right now we're seeing a lot of patience on the offense uh, of Campion. Joel Brown been in the mix for a while now. He's playing over 20 minutes so far. And actually just checking in now. Coach Omar Miles here just checking up his foul situation. Coach Miles always teaching for Campion. Gregory with the rebound gets knocked away. Anderson, what a pass up front to CJ Bennett. And Campion getting out. Here's Dixon, nice speed on the baseline. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Hutton gets it to go. Here goes Anderson to the right side. Daniels. Gregory drives into traffic. So many drives into traffic, like what are they not seeing? The, the man is waiting there and they're still trying to drive through two, you know, one or two guys. They've got to make better decisions here in these tournaments. Yeah, they're not recognizing the defense set up very early on. They're inviting them to, to come in for a charge. Back in the action, it's Dixon carrying it up. Guarded by Bennett Hutton. Thomas, guarded by Bennett. Baseline, nothing there, cut off. Back to Thomas, pull up, no good. Here comes Campion, Anderson pushing it hard. Oh, gives it up. Daniels can't control, here's McDonald out of control. Kicks it Hutton on the wing, no good. Rebound. Both teams really looking to push at the end of this third quarter. Hamilton got that rebound. Yeah, they're going all the way. Anderson, no defense by McDonald as he's looking for help there and no help was forthcoming. Got Dixon ball handling on the top of the key. Dishes off to Thomas. Thomas, what a bucket right there. You know, when I saw these guys in practice, I didn't think that that Thomas would have this much of an impact, but he's been all over the floor. And there's Bennett getting it done again. Some guys just seem to step up at the big moments, and Thomas is doing that for Eastern. 44-40, 2.57 seconds left in the third quarter. Again, another drive into three players. Not a good decision. Bennett, too fast, too quick, but there is number 31, Charles, Elijah Charles, puts it in. We've seen it time and time again. Ball handler driving into traffic with nothing there. And here's McDonald up top, defended by Charles. Simpson, pull up. Nice looking shot by Simpson. Here comes Anderson. Anderson a little out of control. Hamilton drives, oh, and tries to dunk it over top of Thomas. Thomas says, none of that. Get that out of here. We'd like to see that quick turn around the corner there and just go at it. I'd like to see more players do that, play aggressive, make a play at the rim. And see there, the defense had no chance to set up because he didn't pause and hesitate. He went right at the basket. And Quentin Hamilton makes his first free throw. Here comes a rebound off the missed free throw. Bennett got it. Bennett gets it to go, and it is an eight point ball now. Campion up 50 42 with two minutes left in the third. And Banza. Oh, great feed and the dunk. And Banza takes the feed from Simpson and throws it down on the baseline. Did you think he had that in him? Oh, yeah. And Banza showed it time and time again. 
I'm actually more more surprised with CJ. This isn't the same CJ we saw last year for Campion. He's uh, he's a little more diverse in, his, in what he can provide offensively. He must have been working over the summer, working on his shot, trying to get things done, and, and that's the way you have to do it. You, you can't rest on your laurels. You have to work every summer if you want to make it in this basketball thing. Yep, and the, re the release and the rotation on his shot there just looked very fluid. That was a beautiful shot. Champion right now has all types of confidence up 50 to 44. What do you think Eastern's going to have to do to really get themselves back into this, Elias? I think they're going to have to force them into a, in a high-tempo game. Um, well, from what we've seen from Campion, when they're playing at a high speed, a lot of turnovers, a lot of charges, uh, they've been called on. So, you know, if they could dictate the tempo of this game, that would that would play in their favor. All right, here we go. Back to the action. Marcus Anderson has it up top. Defended by McDonald out on the right side. Charles. Charles doesn't go inside to Hamilton. And then turns it over. Cut the ball! Cut the ball! Coach Omar Charles giving a little instruction there to CJ Bennett. You know, if it's not there, cut into the front court. But don't just stand there, you gotta help your teammate out. Here's McDonald defended by Anderson. Got such range on defense, always ball hawking, and there it is. Gets the turnover. Nice pass up ahead, Charles from Daniels. Uh, definitely a travel as he travel. switched his pivot. So rushed there. Take your time. Get set up. Too many for forced possessions on both ends. And Banza will throw it in for Eastern, trailing by six. It's 50 to 44 with a minute and 10 left in the third quarter. Here comes Dixon. Almost stolen by Bennett. Pull up. And Banza can't get the lefty to go. Here comes Charles, and Charles goes all the way to score. Here comes Ampanza, back inbounds. Kicking into another gear is Campion here. Got the lead up to eight. And almost another turnover. There's Dixon down baseline. Dixon. That's a four shot, very, very bad shot right there by Simpson. But Eastern gets the bucket nonetheless. Here comes Anderson with under 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Campion looking to take the last shot of the quarter. There's Anderson, calls out the play. Fist, help comes over, kicks Nice in. kick. Hamilton, got it! That's a nice play call, and that puts the lead to 55-46 after three quarters. St. Edmund Campion leads it in the bronze medal match. We'll be right back after a, this short break and to start the fourth quarter. So stay tuned. This web stream brought to you by Ill Minds Media, North Pole Hoops, and On Point Basketball. Order in the bronze medal match, and there you have Marcus Anderson right off the bat giving an 11 point lead to Kenzie as 
they led it 55-46 after three. It is now 57-46. Pull up Ambanza, no good. Marcus Anderson, nice rebound there by the point guard. I really like the elevation that Ambanza gets on his shot. The rotation's good though. It's a high arc. Hamilton, a spin, nice play. Picked up by Charles, and he's scoring. 13 points right now. Eastern's got to get a score on this possession, Elias. Yeah, they, they've been stunted for the past little past three minutes or so. And one of their high scores popping back into the game. Yossi's Thomas. Here he goes. I uh, haven't seen him for a bit. That, as well as McDonald. They'll come in for Hutton and Osman, who sub out. Keep in mind, Eastern Commerce has been able to, to withstand a lot of pressure here from both St. Mike's and Campion here. This is without one of their main scorers, Cadre Gray. And there we have it, as we said, the substitute, Thomas comes right in and buries the three to cut it to a 10 point lead. And steps. Campion coaches letting their players know that they have the lead. Why are they rushing with a 10 point lead? And that's a great point right there. Here comes Ambanza going left. Force it over to, oh nice feed into Thomas misses. But there you have Jamat, who's finally starting to put in the bunnies that he should have been putting in the first half. Oh no, no foul there. You don't need to do that. Move your feet. Jamat's called for the reach as he tries to get a hold of Charles. Here about Bennett. Bennett to Hamilton, turns the corner. Oh, double dribble. Yeah, double dribble. That's a good call. The lead has been cut to eight from 13, just like that. Couple buckets for Eastern, and they're back in the ball game. Six, 17 left in the fourth quarter. Here comes Dixon. Oh, nice move behind the back. McDonald, defended by Charles. Uh, Force the pass forces. inside. No good. Ooh, referee took a fall. Referee's okay. And there's a bucket. Basket's good there by Campion. They have a 10 point lead. Just checking to see if the referee's okay. Yep. We have five minutes and 55 seconds left in the bronze medal game. Who's going to take third place in the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic? We have yet to decide who's going to be that winner. Okay. You want the ball, you want the ball in the hands of Mbanza right now. He's creating all the offense. There he goes again off the dribble. Try Looks inside a little too much. We want to get it in, they want to get it into his hands. But I don't think at the top of the three-point line at the center is where he's going to be most effective. A little bit forced there. They're going to have to really capitalize going forward and minimize their turnover. Here's Hamilton. Can't get it to drop. Rebound, Dixon. Sees Ambanza on the right side. Dixon goes left and goes right. Spins back. Oh, my goodness. What a dipsy doodle layup. Makes it eight points. Looks like a 30 second timeout here for Campion. Coach Miles doesn't like what he sees right now from his squad giving up a 13 point lead, which is now eight points. Now right after this, we'll follow up with the final game of the evening, the early bird classic championship game between St. Mike's and Thorn Lee. A lot of people didn't expect Thorn Lee to be here. You know, a couple pieces coming from, you know, scattered from across the city, coming together at Thornley. And they showed in that very first game against Father Henry Carr that they were the real deal, holding Carr to only 27 points in that game. 
You know, I expect I expect FHC, on the other hand, to come back regroup for next weekend. Um, you know, this is this isn't typical of them to be playing in a consolation final and in any in tournament and losing. Yep, yeah, in any tournament. All right, back to the action, Campion, and that pass has no business going in there by Hamilton. Not a good look when you're up eight, five minutes to go, and he's subbed out immediately. In the game is Joel Brown, point guard extraordinaire, young point guard coming up. Here's Dixon for Eastern going right to left, the black unis. Campanza goes left. Thomas comes back around, a little weave offense here. These guys really move well off the ball, you can tell. Here's Dixon, no good. Patience Bennett to get an open shot. Pushes it. Anderson, forward to Gregory. And why Gregory touched that, I don't understand when it got tipped. Maybe he didn't see that it got tipped. Here comes Dixon, pushing it forward to Thomas. He drives, Gregory tries to defend. Oh, Anderson with the steal and block. Here he goes. Bennett. Back and out to Anderson. Look at look at the mitts on Anderson right now, man. Yeah. His, those are some huge hands. Huge hands, long arms. Swings it on the outside. And he gets it to go. Not sure if that was a great shot to take, but Charles gets it to go. And it's now an 11 point Campion lead. Dixon, Hutton, Hutton up top. And Banza. And Banza fakes left, goes right, pull up. Oh, stutter move. And Banza! Beautiful move there by Mr. Narcisse. He's been the showman for Eastern All Tournament. You can definitely put together a highlight package based off of this tournament alone for him. Whether it's from the three, whether it's creating off the dribble. Most definitely. Here's Brown. Brown back to Bennett up top. 3.15 left. Bennett on the drive. Oh, doesn't get it to fall. But he's going to go to the line. And one thing you have to say about C.J. Bennett, when he's ready to go to the basket, he's going to the basket strong. Yep. Good core strength. That allows him to adjust on his way there. And he absorbs contact pretty well. He's got good size as well. Not a small guy to say the least. And we're three minutes away from the conclusion of the bronze medal game. St. Edmund Campion representing Brampton. 65-55 over Toronto's Eastern hey, Commerce. The and there's an unforced turnover the by off the hands of Dixon. Just three minutes left, and Campion holds a 10-point lead, trying to hold a bronze medal in the 2014 Early Bird Classic. Charge as Gregory runs over Dixon. Dixon gives it to McDonald. McDonald brings it up. Campion leads it by 10 with 2.48 left. Timeout, Eastern Commerce Saints. Now, Eastern found themselves in a similar situation last game against St. Mike's. Down 10, about three minutes to go. Here it's 2.45. You know, what do they got to do, Drew? What do they got to do, do to get past this little hump? Well, they need to stop turning the ball over, <laughs> number one. They need to rush because they're down 10, so they're going to have to get a couple quick buckets. I think you've got to go to a full court press. I mean, you, they have to force some turnovers. It's going to be tough, though. The ball handling of Brown and, uh, and of course, Anderson is going to be tough to get the ball away from. Something tells me that Kevin Jeffers will, will come out of this timeout here in, in a press, no doubt. Yeah, they've got to force the issue. I mean, what do you have to lose at this point? You're in the bronze medal game. You want to get that, that, that hardware if you can. And uh, you lay it all out on the line in this last two minutes and 45 seconds. 
now. I'd, I'd like to see the the ball in the hands of Mbanza as he's been able to create offense. Whether it's him or Jason McDonald doesn't make a difference. But you know, w with Mbanza, there's a lot of attention on him right now as a scorer. So the, you can expect that a double team will come in, and that's where he's going to find his open man. So if that does, yeah, he's got to make himself a facilitator and get somebody an open shot, and hopefully they can knock it down. At the same time, the guys off the ball got to make themselves very available. Exactly. Okay, here's McDonald. He's going to go quick. He's going to move. Left hand layup, no good. Rebound, gets it back. Locked down, no call. Here comes Anderson. And Eastern's going to try to double now. Thomas and McDonald back to Bennett up top. Guarded by Simpson. Oh, Ooh. shifts him. The simplicity of that move and how he can get a defender. Wow. Bennett kicks it back out. They're looking at a little motion. You know what? Bennett can handle the ball a lot better than, than I thought. He doesn't really get a lot of chance to with those point guards. Oh, great play. Simpson. McDonald. Euro step. No good. The cleanup from Joseph Thomas. Oh, and it. one. Count it. That was some sensational play by Josie Thomas. 65-57 with two minutes exactly, two minutes to go in the bronze medal match. Got it. Booked that one. Thomas playing well. It's a seven point lead with two minutes left. Three quarter court press by Eastern. I think they should go to a man to man full court. Oh, there's a steal almost by McDonald. And Bennett back, back court for Brown. Brown goes left, kicks it. Fine. No good there. Oh, here comes Anderson. They're just playing keep away right now. This is where the shot clock would be good. You wouldn't be able to do this kind of play. Here comes Anderson on the drive, kicks it. Brown up top to Bennett. And a simple driving kick. It's all and a travel. Yeah, definitely. CJ Bennett with the turnover. Here comes McDonald. Chance to cut this to either a five or four point lead. Chance of defense, deep shot, and Banza! Right on the money. Four point lead. Brown almost turned over. Full time, no foul there. I think Thomas thought there was a foul on the play, but no, it was a timeout called 65-61. Champions lead cut to four, and they almost turned it over. This crowd is buzzing right now in anticipation of the gold medal match that's coming up. It should be a dandy. Thorn Lee, the unheralded Thorn Lee team, getting to the final against Officer Champions a couple years ago, the St. Mike's Blue Raiders. I think it's a contrast of styles, to say the least, in that game. No doubt about it. I mean, well, they can both they can both shoot the three to some degree, but I think you have multiple specialists on the St. Mike's Blue Raiders squad. They really know how to open up the floor, space it out, and create good shots for each other. So. And then, of course, as we talked about earlier, there's Danilo Djuricic to worry about. Yeah, I think Danilo's going to have a bigger, bigger game than the last one. Oh, and there's a foul. And that's unnecessary. You're up four. You don't want to foul Eastern if you're champion. As Anderson knocks down Ambanza. And we're one foul away from a bonus. Coach Miles 
Miles giving it to CJ Bennett, saying that forced jump shot when you're up four. In, in other words, you want to let them foul you with anything. Thomas with the hook. Wow, that's a tough call to take at this stage of the ball game. And it was, it was definitely a hook. He extended that arm and wrapped it around his defender's hip. No need to do that. You're trying to get a bucket right now. There's the three-quarter court press. Anderson over to Brown. Brown to Gregory. Gregory double team. Oh, gets the ball taken away. Push it forward and bands up. Oh, almost dunks it on him. And then you have Dixon with the rebound. Can you believe he tried to dunk that, Elliot? You know, you got to attack with that type of force in those type of situations. You're either going to get a foul, you know, but Marcus Anderson used his length well there on that play. We got Dixon on the line here with 30 seconds left. And he can make this two point game. Okay, here we go. Shot is good. Dixon cuts it to three. One possession game. Here comes Dixon at the line. Dixon gets it to go. Two point game, 65 63. 29 seconds left. Can Eastern come back and get this bronze medal? Brown to Bennett on the baseline. And he scores it. And that's what Omar Miles was talking about. Coach Miles asking him to attack the hoop. Here's Ambanza. No good. Rebound. Can't get it to go. That might be it. As Simpson could not get the rebound to go on the follow. Jason McDonald called for the foul. It's a four-point lead with 7.4 seconds left and a timeout. Timeout is called on the floor. We're going to get a little bit of the audio here from Campion. on their press break out of the timeout. 67-63, it's a four point lead with 7.4 seconds left. Oh, and Easter with the turnover, put it up, and Benza, no good. And that's it, the bronze medal goes to St. Edmund Campion, 67-63 in the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early bird classic. A very valiant effort there from Eastern Commerce, taking it down to the wire. Stay tuned with us uh, as we uh, will be interviewing the player of the game. All right, we'll be right back. You're watching the 2014 Father Henry Carr Classic. Thanks alongside Elias Viet of NorthPoleHoops.com. We'll be right back with a quick interview leading into the gold medal game, so stay tuned.
My name is Elias Viet from North Pole Hoops. I'm standing here with CJ Bennett of the Campion Bears. CJ, congratulations, number one, on the bronze medal. Now, this is a team that, you know, has added a couple of pieces, um, a couple of the younger guys jumping into the squad. What can you say about the impact that Joel has had on the team so far, Joel Brown? Oh, he's had a great impact on the team. He's uh, been a real floor general for us. He knows how to handle the ball real well. And he's been able to felicitate offense um, off of that. Okay, and, and speak a little bit on your game. We've seen a lot of improvement in your game as well. You're able to shoot the three ball with some consistency now. The form's tightened up, and you're creating off the dribble. What did you do this summer to really take your game to the next level? I just worked on my shot, you know. I tried to slow up, but I, I guess I put on weight, and I just learned how to be quicker on my feet. Okay, and, and what type of role do you look to have at the post-secondary level? I try to be the leader role. I'm, I'm going, I know I'm going to go in as a rookie, but I'm still going to try to earn my, earn my stripes. Okay, an expectation for the season coming in. Now we got you guys and DeVille are the top teams in Brampton this year. Notre Dame lost a lot of pieces. Do you feel like you got what it takes, does the team got what it takes this year to take Campion over the hump and, and get a city final? Most definitely, I think so. Okay, there you have it. We're, sit, we're standing here with C.J. Bennett. 20 point game, player of the game. CJ, congratulations.
Father Henry Carr Classic. I'm Drew e. Banks alongside Elias Viet. Oh, you got it right this time. I got it. Elias, this game, probably not the outcome we thought that would be in the final, but still, nonetheless, it's going to be an intense game. We got one side and St. Mike's. Uh, what's your analysis of the game and what we have to look forward to? Well, St. Mike's championship pedigree on this squad. A lot of young talent. Danilo Gajerch is being one of the major pieces for this team. Nelson Caputo, one of their one of their leaders on the offense, controlling the floor. But then on the other side, you got Jaden Lewis. Um, you got Nerosin. Who, who was a very effective all throughout this, this week. So what we're going to see is, is a, a lot of three balls going up from St. Mike's, which is very typical of them. And on the other end, um, St. Felix, the point guard for Thornley, will look to really push in transition. Now, it's early in the season, but does a winner of this tournament really uh, you know, use this as momentum to carry on throughout the rest of the tournaments and, and league games that come on? After most this? definitely, most definitely. I think it's a confidence builder when one off right off the bat. I think it sets a statement uh, for the rest of the teams that are, that are involved in the high school scene. And you know, next weekend, as we said earlier in, in the broadcast, um, we're off to the Humber Classic, which is another big time tournament, including a lot of the teams that, that have been in the mix here. So definitely, statement victory, confidence, uh, it does a lot for, for the winning team. All right, there you have it. Stay tuned for the starting lineups. My name is Drew Banks, onpointbasketball.com, Elias Spiet, northpolehoops.com, and of course, Ill Minds Media bringing you the web stream. Stay tuned right here, the grand final, the championship final, the 2014 Father Henry Carr Classic. Vic. What, what year is this? The third, fourth, fifth, sixth annual? Doesn't matter. Okay. Check, check. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the gold medal game where we have the St. Mike's Blue Raiders versus the Thornley Thunder in the Nike Early Bird Gold Medal match. And now, the starting five for the Blue Raiders. At guard, the senior standing at six foot one, number three, Nelson Caputo. At guard, the grade 10, standing six foot one, number five, Marcus Carr. At forward, the senior standing six foot five, number 30, Nicola Paradina. And standing six foot four, that forward, grade 11, number 44, Jamal Abbey Wright. And in his last game, almost getting a triple double with 29 points, number 31, the grade 10 at six foot seven, Danilo Jurochich. Head coach, Jeff Zauner. And now, the starting lineup for the home team, the Thornley Thunder. At guard slash forward, at grade 11, standing six foot three, the lights out shooter, Jaden Lewis. Standing at five foot 10, the senior guard, Kimberl St. Felix. 
at guard, standing five foot eleven, the grade eleven, Dre McIntosh. Holding down the forwards for the Thunder at six foot four, the senior forward, Brendan Persad. And at six foot six, the grade eleven forward, Neroshan Surintran. Head coach Shane James. And here we are, the gold medal match in the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Big game tilt between St. Mike's and Thornley. Let's get it on. Elias, this game is something that uh, we most people were not anticipating, but I'm sure it's going to be a great game nonetheless. Well, yeah, there's, there's been a lot of surprises in this tournament. For number one, Father Henry Carr exiting very early. Um, number two, St. Mary's falling two games really, really quick, and, and one of them by, by a margin of bigger than 15. Um, Thornley has been consistent in their execution. St. Mike's really stroking the three ball. There we had Jaden from Thornley stroking it. But um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. A lot of weapons on the floor here. All right, St. Mike's in their white uniforms. They are going from left to right on your screen in the webcast. Thor Lee going to the left. Let's go over to starting lineups for St. Mike's. Number three, Nelson Caputo. Number five, Marcus Carr. Number 30, Nicola Paradina. Number 31, Danilo Juricic. And number 44, Jamal Abbey Wright. And for Thorn Lee, it's number 35, Jalen Jaden Lewis, as we mentioned. Number 15. Brandon Persaud, let's run down the lineup. Number 22, Drashir McIntosh. Number 30, Niroshan Sarendran. And number 11, Kimbrel St. Felix. Right off the bat, we saw the three. Lewis, he hit it. Thorn Lee has the three nil lead to start the game. And here is Paradina on the inbounds, finds Caputo inside to Danilo Juricic. Sarendran gets him, no good. Rebound, Sarendran to St. Felix. This is a matchup they're gonna really wanna take advantage of. When Danilo establishes position in the low post, he's gonna have a hard time guarding him. Not as lengthy, equally, probably equally as strong, but once he establishes position, he's got a, a variety of moves that he can use in there. Very diverse skill set for sure. And Lewis knocks down his second three. And we looked for him to get it turned on in the last game. Had a little bit of foul trouble in the first half. But he seems ready to go in the final. Thorn Lee looking to win a big tournament. I can't remember when the, when's the last time they won one. So they really want to get one in here. And there's Carr. The young Buck steps up and hits a three of his own. This is what this game's going to be about. Both teams are looking to come out here and snipe. The spacing of the floor is, is going to be key to, you know, to getting the open looks. There we St. go, Felix. Felix! Great finish there by Felix on the reverse. Here comes Carr. He's going to pull up again. He's not basketball. No good. Juricic rebound and put back. Here's Lewis put on the line. And Lewis can't believe he stepped on the line. 8-5. Thornley with the lead. They've gotten off to a very good start, start so far. And Paradina can't get it to go inside. Caputo, no rebound. And Thornley comes back down and a turnover by McIntosh. And aside now, aside from the rebound and, and, and cleanup that, that Danilo had down low there. Every possession for St. Mike's, as we've seen, has been a three. And if they're not making those threes, it, it might be trouble for them. So they've got to really establish an inside-outside game. Here's Carr. Two for three right now from the perimeter. Carr gets it back.
rips down the rebound in traffic. St. Felix has it. St. Felix. Inside Sarendra, nice spin, step back, no good. Uh, he took a, page, Caputo. took a page out of DeJurchich's book there on the turnaround. Oh, Caputo, pull back, no good. Rebound inside by number 23, DeAndre Austin, who's in the game. Coach St. James calls for motion offense. Austin, left side, kicks it. Oh my goodness. McIntosh. And as we wind down into the final minute of the first quarter, find Nelson Caputo here driving. The ball is tipped out of bounds. It looks like it still will go St. Mike's way. And Caputo's got the inbounds. Jurisic inside. Kayon. Grant gets it, no good. Oh, rebound, Felix, wow, what a leaper he is. Felix comes right back the other way, swings it outside to Lewis. He hasn't missed yet, there he goes. Finally, a miss for Lewis, who started off on fire. Caputo, Juricic, no good. Paradina tries to tip it, oh, and gets it away from Lewis. Lewis tips it away as he tries to get it back to Caputo. Good effort there by Paradina, getting his hands on it. Regaining possession for St. Mike's. We got two subs coming in here. Oh, two subs, number 22 coming in, Ketavong. Number 44, Abby Wright coming in for St. Mike's. Julian Grant is called for the five second and turns it over. Thorn Lee with the lead, 1917. This quarter has whizzed by, Elias. It's uh, been a free quarter, not a lot of fouls called, just getting up and down and making shots. Oh, good baseline pass inside, 21-17. And that's Darius Thorn on the finish. That's a great finish inside. You know, he's using his size and shielding off the defender with his butt on that play. Here comes Caputo, high pick and roll. Abby Wright gets it, swings it to Caputo. High screen. Oh my, my, oh my. My, oh my, oh my. 12, 12 point first half for Nelson Caputo. First quarter. First, the first half, that would be pretty good. Sorry, sorry, but I said first half. Quarter. First quarter. 21 <laughs> 20 right now. St. Mike's with a one point deficit in this. Two fouls on Thorn Lee, no fouls on St. Mike's. It's been a really stirring first quarter. And both teams shooting the ball extremely well. You're tuned in to the final of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. I'm Drew e. Banks from onpointbasketball.com with my colleague here, Elias Viet of NorthPoleHoops.com and the broadcast brought to you by Ill Minds Media. Yeah, Make yeah. sure you check them out, check us all out, social media at Ill Minds Media, at North Pole Hoops, at Elias underscore NPH, and at Drew Ebanks for On Point Basketball. Hit us up on Instagram as well, at On Point Basketball, at NPH, or North Pole Hoops, and at Elias underscore NPH. Follow us on those social media networks and keep in the action and knowing what's going on in Canadian basketball. Okay, we're about to start the second quarter. It's been a very well played first quarter. Highly skilled game so far. Both teams really getting good play out of their top players. Jaden Lewis playing well. Nelson Caputo playing well. Danilo, Danilo Juricic playing well. You gotta like what you're seeing on the, on the floor, Elias. I mean, this is, this is quality basketball right here. No forced shots. We're not seeing a lot of turnovers. You know, we got two uh, head steady point guards. Three seconds and a key there. Nerosen gets called for the three. You got to have both feet outside of the box. I think he was expecting that pass a little sooner. Yep. Uh, 
pass was kind of shaded right there, so he didn't get it off. Here comes Caputo. And if I'm guarding Caputo, I'm not even giving him an inch of separation. I am face guarding Caputo. I'll, I'll rather have him drive at this point. And that's, that seems to be what they're doing right now with uh, St. Felix. To me, it's a bit late. I mean, you don't need a scouting report to understand that Nelson Caputo hit shots now. And so you wasted a time where you gave him 12 points when you could have been up on him from the beginning. But let's see if the Thornhill, Thornley strategy uh, is effective against Caputo going forward. Here is St. Felix bringing it up. Lewis on the left. Oh, Surendran almost gets it stolen by Caputo, picked up by St. Felix. A crowd on him, and there's a reaching foul called by referee Dave in the mix. And that's on Caputo on the hold. I think one thing that separates a, a, a lot of the high level players, a player like Caputo, is his competitive edge. He has a nature about him that, you know, he, he really, really hates to lose. You can tell in his body language, you can tell in his face. Nothing sticks out to me more than, the, than that final game that they played at Offsa where they were eliminated early. And, you know, the, the tears that came out of him, the, the frustration, the look in his eyes. He was just, you know, he's been thinking about coming back to this season since that game. Yeah, that's a big loss for them. Jurisic, no good. He's a bit off right now in his outside game. Austin with the rebound, number 23, physical specimen. Over to Jaden Lewis, another physical specimen at the high school level. Got the body for higher level basketball. Oh, Surendran with the drive. And he will go to the line for two. Regardless of the hold there, Surendran able to get a pretty good shot. You know, he's been quite impressive. I mean, just plays within himself does what the coaches ask. I've never seen the coaches admonish him at all this weekend and other guys on his team, you know, the coaches have had to say, you know, basically check with them and make sure they knew what they're doing. But he seems to know exactly what his role is and stays within that. Definitely. Surindran's uh what you call what we call a role player. Um, a, a CIS special, if you will. Um, for any CIS coaches watching online right now, uh, this is a guy who's gonna come in, he's gonna compete at a high level. He's gonna give you energy day in, day out. And you know, I think he, he forces teammates to also get better because of the effort levels that he, that he puts in. It's all about effort, you know. Ha three quarters of the game is effort and smarts more than the physical part of it. Well, Here's yeah, sometimes, sometimes, you know, you, you watch high school players play and if a coach has got to ask for effort from you, that's just, you're a negative on the floor. Yeah, if that ever happens, then uh, he's got to sub you out. And we saw Caputo with the left-handed layup through traffic. And he's not only doing it inside, outside, but he's doing it inside. But I'll give that up. I'll give him a layup up, but I don't want to see him get threes if I'm the opposing coach. Surendran tries to thread the needle. Not a good pass there, as Thorne can't handle the pass. Surendran subs out now. And Brendan Prasad comes in. Enters. Number 15, Prasad. Here I think comes. Those, two, those two definitely fill, fill the same role, the same need on this team definitely know what they are supposed to do. Here comes calling the offense. Julian Grant looking down low. Paradina pivots. Paradina wants it. Nope, doesn't take it. Back out to Julian Grant. Floor pretty well spaced out here for St. Mike's. Paradina goes, doesn't want it. Caputo, and there you see Felix not letting him add it. Oh, Julian Grant, what a rebound. Swing that athleticism. This performance, all tournament. I mean, you're looking at the MVP there. You're looking at the on-point performer. Absolutely. Of this tournament. He, if if St. Mike's pulls it out, there's nobody that I'm voting for besides Nelson Caputo. That's our MVP. But lots of basketball to play. And there's Paradina, loses it out of bounds. And of course, Thornley is in this game. Don't get me wrong. Thornley has just as much chance to win it. And it's... 25-22, timeout Thornley. We'll be right back. You're watching the web stream of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic.
And we're back. The action is continuing. Second quarter, 5.08 left in the gold medal game of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. And we see a three-quarter court press by St. Mike's. Prasad drives through it. Kick it to Austin. Moves it to McIntosh up top. Jaden Lewis buries it. Now these guys are going neck and neck, back and forth here between Jaden Lewis and Nelson Caputo. This has been a great matchup to watch. Jurisic down low. Got the shorter man on him. Tied up. Caputo. Oh, hand touch right there. And the, re the referees are going to call that every single time. And the basket for these two guys just looks like the ocean right now. I feel like they, if they just threw it in, it's just it's going in no matter what. And you know what? It's, it's the practice you put in, right? It's the practice, the hours. And when you get on a court like this, it doesn't phase you. This full crowd, you know, City TV in the building. You know, we got a shout out. They've been covering high school basketball for a long time. Uh, you know, you got spectators, you got scouts, you've got coaches from other teams, players. From, no one's leaving this gym. They want to see this final. Back to the action. Caputo inside. Jurisic turns. That's a tough shot right there. Not sure if he wanted that far away on a turnaround. And Jurisic has really got to find his groove out inside first and then you know make his way out. Austin couldn't get the tip in, almost had it. Jurisic always a force inside, making shots difficult. Here's Carr, baseline. Julian Grant, no good. Thorn Lee picks it up. There's Prasad, looks forward, nice pass to Austin. And he scores the bucket. 26-25, Thorn Lee leads it. Second quarter, 342 left. Standing Caputo. room only in this gym right now. Jurisic can't get it to drop. Rebound slipped away. Prasad at the right place at the right time. I got to give it up to Thorn Lee's defense right now. They're making it really hard for Jurisic to get off a clean shot. Making it really hard. And there Jaden you have it. Lewis. That's when you know your, your shot's going. It looked like it was going to go long, and he's got the shooter's roll. The he's rim got about 14, 15 points already. The rim is showing him some love. That one rattled right in. Here's Carr. Carr fakes left, goes right. Julian Grant, Caputo, Caputo. Carr, he'll go up with it at every time. Rebound, nice one. McIntosh. Coach Shane James calling out the play. 28-25, Thorne Lee playing well. Oh, nice feed to Prasad. Oh! Rolls right out get for Prasad. Here we got Nelson Caputo in transition. And that was Slows Thorne. it down. Thorne was looking for him on that play, and that was incredible right there. Almost got to go. Car drives, no good. As we mentioned, the younger brother of Dwayne Notice, South Carolina Gamecock. And we're looking for him to have a huge season for South Carolina. And no doubt, he's uh, hopefully checking the stream out. If he's not at a football game down south, yep. he's checking the stream and seeing what his brother's doing. And good anticipation there by Marcus Carr, checking out his defender, re recognizing, you know, he had him beat off the dribble, forcing him into a foul. He's almost Harden-esque, eh? James Harden, the way he can... Uh, you know, pretty much get to the basket at will. Little crafty moves, up fake, head fake, yep, yep. And, and gets to the basket. I, I like that in a young player. He's going to get to the line a lot in the future. Here he goes again, driving kick. Caputo. Oh, just short this time. Two men on the glass. And look at Prasad in there, battling the two big men, Paradina and Jurisic inside. And Thorne Lee comes back with it. Nice look inside. Lewis, can he get the fadeaway? No, Jurisic. Ah, got a little Grab happy there. Down. He had Brandon Prasad to kick out to. Settled for a more lower percentage shot. Yeah, you can't be selfish. As much as you want, you're feeling it, that you're on fire, you have to make the right play. Every possession counts in the championship final, and especially in a tournament of this magnitude. Now this gym has pretty much reached beyond capacity. The doors got, are open. That's how <laughs> many people are in here. You, you got give some air in here. You got people watching from the entrance. You got people on the baseline. Referees kind of shoving them away. Okay, Julian Grant. Oh, beautiful shot. And a football player playing both sports, playing basketball, and it looks like he doesn't miss a beat whether it's on a football field or the basketball court. You know, I'm really fond of the multi-sport athlete because they bring a lot of 
They bring a lot of, not necessarily skills, but athletic abilities, such as their footwork, their athleticism. I mean, you see him go up for a rebound, it's as, and it's as if he's receiving, you know, receiving a ball from a quarterback. Yeah, he, he kind of has that body of a tight end, to be honest with you. And uh, we rejoin the action, a turnover just on the sideline, the, the far sideline here, the near sideline for Thorne Lee. Julian Grant gets it. St. Mike's down one, 28-27. Here's the quarterback, Nelson Caputo, looking for Jurisic, drives and slashes through. What a layup. Incredible shot by Caputo. And I'll tell you something, Division I coaches, I don't know where you are, but you should definitely be knocking on the door of Nelson Caputo. He is a point guard, a la Tyler Ennis. Not superiorly athletic, but just a heady point guard, knows when to use his game and knows when to find his other players for big buckets. Well, you know, Nelson very, very hard over the years. Uh, the Baylor Bears, you know, the fond of their Canadians. They've been tracking us for a while, you know, but started with Brady Heslop, who obviously was phenomenal for them. Now found a spot in an NBA roster. Oh my goodness. McIntosh goes coast to coast. And gives Thorne Lee the one point lead. 30-29 with 28 and a half seconds to go. Basketball is alive in Canada, folks. No defense for McIntosh. He's just gonna be content to stay home. Looking to take the last shot here is Marcus Carr. Marcus Carr. Starts his dribble. Gave it to Juricic. Fakes it to Carr. On the right side, Caputo. Prasad, good defense. Wow, that looked like that was gonna go down too. And there you have it, 30-29 at the half. Thorne Lee leads it over St. Mike's. You're watching the web stream of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. My name is Drew Ebanks alongside Elias Spiet. Stay tuned for the second half. We'll be right back after this break. AJ, get a shot of this for uh, the coach too, right? Yeah, yeah. After a cookie bar, uh, chip. Yeah. All right, we're back here. The 2014 Father Henry Carr Classic. We're halftime between St. Mike's and Thorn Lee. Thorn Lee with the one point lead. And we've talked about all the special guests that are in the gym and in the building. None other than head coach Roy Rana of the Ryerson Rams. How you doing, coach? I'm doing well. I'm doing and, well. And also, of course, the junior national Canadian team yeah, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. It's always fun to get to watch some high school ball and uh, a great event. Great event here. Now, coach, were you here for the Eastern Commerce game as well? I was. Yeah, absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit about this team. You, this, this is a team that you've coached before. Talk about their grittiness and their their unwillingness yeah. to you know to, to let down their head coach. Oh, well, you know, I mean, Kevin does a great job with them. I, I was actually very impressed with their level of execution, but they just they play with so much heart, right, so much passion, and it's always emotional watching those kids play because they get the most out of everything they've got. Most definitely. Tournament, I mean, look at it. It's, it's getting bigger. Basketball is growing, as we know, in the country. You can't get a seat in this gym. Um, talk about the growth that you see over the last couple of years. That's beautiful. It's growing on every, you know, in every area, and it's nice to see the high school games still have you know, a real following, and uh, credit to Henry Carr and the tournament that they run, because this has become one of the feature events on the high school circuit. And great ball, I think it's wide open this year, a lot of really good teams, uh, it's going to be a fun high school season. I wanted to ask you, of course, your head coach of Ryerson, the team looked great over the summer, we saw them in some summer tournaments, they captured two, 
the Jane and Finch tournament was the big one that they got. The national championships are here in Toronto at the Madame's Athletic Center. Talk about leading up to that. You have a home opener coming this Wednesday and what it means to actually host the Nationals as well. Well, it's a pretty special event for our university, but I think it's a pretty special event for Toronto basketball. I mean, to host a, you know, a, a university national championship in our city hopefully is going to engage and inspire a lot of people to come out and support. We've got a really, really good team. Uh, I'm excited about our guys. Most of them are from the GTA. So uh, we open this Wednesday against Western. I think it's going to be a special night. We have Bill Walton coming in. He's going to toss up the opening tip. It's going to be a fun night. Bill Walton in the mix. <laughs> now, Coach Rana, there's, some, there's obviously some, some targets here that we can look at for the junior national team. Speak to me on a little bit about who you, who you guys are not on the radar. Well, I think right now, I mean, we, we see a lot of uh, younger kids coming up, that, uh, you know, in the pipeline that are going to be great players. St. Mike's has three on their team right now. We bond with Nemhart. And, but you always see some jewels. I mean, I love the Eastern kid, Narcisse, today. I mean, what, you know, what a great player at the high school level. So I think there's a lot of talent for a lot of different purposes. Obviously, I'm here as a Ryerson coach watching kids that potentially could play for me there. And, that's great. It's just a great tournament, great place to be and get to see everybody in the community. It's, it's nice. We don't often have a Saturday night off in our league, so I'm enjoying this. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot now. We have a one-point lead yeah. at the half. Who do you got picked for this game? Uh, yeah, We're putting I, you on the spot. I can, I can. I mean, I love Shane. I, I have a lot of respect for St. Mike, so <laughs> I mean, may the best team win. There you have it. May the best team win. Head coach of the Ryerson Rams, Roy Rana. Remember, Wednesday night, it's the opener against Western at the Madame Athletic Center. Be there. And in March, 12th to 15th, the CIS Final Eight Championships are right here in Toronto. So come on out and support Canadian basketball. We'll be right back to start the second half of the gold medal final between St. Mike's and Thorn Lee. The second half is about to start in the championship game of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. My name is Drew Banks alongside Elias Spiet. And it's been an exciting first half. Thor Lee has a 30-29 lead. What do you look forward to seeing in the second half, Elias? You know what? To be honest with you, as entertaining as Nelson Caputo and Jaden Lewis have been, I would like to see them lock up on each other. You know, right now we're seeing Jaden pick up a little further out on the three-point line not giving Nelson space here he's playing help defense oh and a travel called on Danilo but yeah I would like to see those you know strategic defense played on those guys most definitely you have to pay special attention to number three on white and number 31 on white and you have to definitely pay special attention to number 35 on black now of course with with St. Mike's shooting well you know Thornley in, in their in their timeout and in their halftime have discussed this. Right, and there and there we see Jaden Lewis hitting another three. So they've discussed both teams are shooting the three ball at a high percentage. It's time to go inside to Danilo. This is where this is where you take advantage of the post presence, perhaps get Niroshin in uh, in some foul trouble as well. And I'm telling you, that shot by Lewis, he was guarded by Danilo right on that play. 6-7 right in front of him. He rose up and just drained the three to give Thorne Lee the four-point lead, 33-29. 6.57 left in the third. Here's Lewis again. Oh, can't get the floater to go. Follows his own rebound, but it's out of bounds. Oh, he gets it back. And that's just hustle and effort by Jaden Lewis. The stock that this kid's stock has risen dramatically over the last three days. 2016 combo guard, do it all, shoot the three, create off the dribble, 
Ooh, and then you got Brendan Prasad with a step back two. That is nice. Six point lead for Lee, just like they started in the first half. They're shooting at an incredible clip right now. In, in my estimation, I have them in the 70s right now. Percentage wise, that is. And Carr, pull up, no good on the three. Paradina chases it down, saves it in. Good oh, hustle by Paradina. Narendran, oh, Lewis, good catch. Tried to get it back to Prasad, picked off. Caputo comes right back down, swings it outside. Carr for the three, no good. He follows his shot though, no box out on Thorn Lee. And a cross court pass to Caputo. Jurisic. And there's a foul there. And mismatch. that's exactly what we were talking about there. Taking advantage, recognizing the mismatch, getting it downloaded to Juric. Somehow, St. Felix ended up on Juricic, and that is definitely not the uh, Thornley wanted inside. Surrendran has him. Is he going to shoot it over him? Nope, can't get it to fall. There's St. Felix with the great rebound over to Prasad. Prasad, middle of floor. He has a lot of handles. Right to the hoop, and he takes it. Nice take. Incredible take there by Prasad. He realized he had a mismatch and went right at the basket. Coach Shane James happy right now. His team is playing the way they should be, playing aggressive and playing good defense. We get a head nod from Coach Shane James. He, he doesn't look too impressed. He's trying to get up by 20. <laughs> hey, you'll take it. You'll take it. If you're up by seven against St. Mike's in the third quarter, you, you got to feel pretty good with yourself. And you're in rhythm right now offensively. And he makes it, and it's an eight-point cushion for Thorn Lee. And I think the crowd is a bit stunned right now. The way Thorn Lee's playing and shooting, nobody could have predicted this coming into the game. And here's Caputo over to Paradina. Not good on that. Surendran on the glass. He's cleaning it. Here comes St. Felix. Goes forward. Lewis kicks it on the outside of Prasad. Air ball. Surendran. Terendra with the turnaround, not sure if that was the shot they wanted. Could have maybe worked it around. Here's Caputo down the right side. I would play up on him if I was Lewis. Oh, crafty dribbler. Juricic swings it back to Carr. Carr a la James Harden got the handles. What's he going to do? Swings it back. Caputo almost a travel there. Look close. Carr gets it. And not only does... Marcus Carr had the ability to get to the basket, Elias. His three-point shot is unconscious. He'll shoot it at any time. He's got the green light, well, definitely. You know, not many people know this, but Marcus Carr spent his whole summer training with NCAA and professional talent. Talent that's playing overseas right now, talent that's on NBA rosters, he, including his brother um, from South Carolina, as you mentioned earlier, Dwayne Notice. This is a guy who has played um, played and practiced amongst top-level talent. You can expect that he's coming into this tournament with an alpha dog mentality looking to take over games. And you know what? That's an incredible thing to hear. A grade 10, you know, going into grade 10 this summer, he wasn't even in grade 10, is really working out and wants to improve so badly. Yeah, well, it shows just how advanced he is. And then we have Nelson Caputo with another three ball. Like, he doesn't even need a screen. He doesn't even need a screen. All he needs is a little bit of daylight, and it's going down. 35, the lead is cut to two from eight, just like that. 4.18 left in the third quarter in the championship final of the Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Surrendering up top on the screen, and he drives. Oh, nice drive there. McIntosh, but he can't get it to go. And then... You know what I'm loving, turns it over. What I'm loving about Caputo right now is his is his composure. You know, he, he shoots a ball, he goes in, he's got six threes in the game, and he's like, yeah, I'm supposed to be doing that. That's supposed to be going in. Worked tremendously hard on, on, on fixing his three-point game. And you know what? That you said, Last year, you look at him shoot, and he had a little kick. His left foot would pop out. Now everything's looking tighter. Yeah, it, it's just work. you got to put in the work. Uh, if you want to be good, if you want to be great, and the work's done over the summer, and obviously uh, he's done that. Jaden Lewis, a nice little fake on the baseline. Doesn't get the shot to drop, but he's going to the line and can give Thorn Lee a four-point lead if he makes both free throws. There's he's, one. He's been tremendous this whole tournament. You know, in the opening game against Father Henry Carr, he, I, I believe he finished with 18 points in that game. 
Oh, uh, he's certainly got the physicality, the physical tools to be an effective combo guard. Not only can he shoot, he can take it and put it on the rack, uh, and you can also find players that are open as well. And he gives Thorn Lee the four-point lead again, a little bit of a cushion. Again, here comes the dangerous, ever dangerous Caputo. Hands off to Carr. Carr's got the green light, and he, oh, that looked like it was going in, but just missed. Here comes Lewis. Defended by Carr. Carr switches on to St. Felix. St. Felix with it, Surendran inside Lewis. Lewis turns and he is feeling real good right now. A turn around jumper once again, that's a go-to move. And that's 21 points. Our statistician Zane tells us that he's got 21 points in the ball game already, and it's only 317 left in the third quarter. You're tuned in to the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Stay tuned for the rest of the third quarter and game. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird. It's the championship game between Thorn Lee and Black against St. Mike's in White. And the scoring update right now, 21 points for Jaden Lewis and 20 points for Nelson Caputo. Both stars for their teams. Number 35, Lewis, on the Black team, Thorn Lee. Number 3, Caputo on St. Mike's. They're balling out today, Elias. And you know what? There's nothing anyone can do to stop them. They've tried multiple, multiple different matchups, and regardless, I mean, everyone seems to be falling for that turnaround jumper from Jaden and the three ball from Caputo. Whether he's right on the line or, or three feet out, he's knocking it down. And here's St. Felix guarded by Caputo. Caputo over to Jaden. Lewis. Lewis guarded by Julian Grant. Felix right here. St. Felix, Surendran, and he drives, strong drive. Great oh, defense great by the defense. ninth grader there. Colby Ketavall been an unheralded grade nine player this tournament, and I'm sure the NPH scouting crew is all over him. We've definitely taken notice on him, and we'll be continue to track him. Here comes Caputo, swings it, Julian Grant, and wow, that offense. Julian Grant, let's talk a little bit about Julian Grant. I mean, he doesn't do anything exceptionally great, but he just plays his role and just comes up with big plays time after He's one of those players who's going to have uh, scholarship offers at the CIS level for basketball, as well as football scholarships across the board. Now, the thing with him is he's got to make a decision. He's getting close to that graduation year. Am I going to play football or am I going to play basketball? And really focus on, on a skill set if he's going to play basketball. Yeah, he's uh, getting it done out here. Beautiful offense, Caputo, the driving kick, and gets it to go. At the line is McIntosh. No, sorry, my bad. That's Thorne. Thorne at the line. Thorne, Thorne Lee up four at 41-37. 2.07 left in the third quarter of this championship gold medal match between Thorne Lee and St. Mike's. Two basketball powers in the city of Toronto in the greater Tor Toronto area coach Jeff Zauner on the sidelines for St. Mike's a formidable player back in his time Shane James as well pro player for Thorn Lee and he's now coach back to the action it's Caputo 
on the right side, guarded by Lewis, swings it to Carr, guarded by Austin, kicks it back out to Caputo, and the drive, what a beautiful pass, and Gordon. Abby Wright cannot finish it. It was almost like he was going to shoot it, and he, he realized, the last second, so oh, was peripheral. incredible peripheral vision there from Nelson Caputo. He's just doing it all. And we got a minute 53 here on the clock. St. Mike's uh, leads and by that three. one rolls out. Three point lead. St. Mike's gets it back. Caputo underneath. And on the line. Caputo gets called on the line. It's going to head back the other way. Thornley will have it with a three point lead with 148 left in the third quarter. They try for the inbounds. No good. Almost thrown away. Here's Jurisic. Picks it up. Over to Carr. Paradina. No good on the three. Jurisic fights for the rebound. Even though he didn't get it, he still tipped it. Goes up strong. And he's fouled. Can you Tough. see that? Even though Danilo didn't get the rebound, just him battling caused that play, and he gets it back and gets a chance for two points right here on and the you free know, he, line. He almost finished that play regardless of the contact there. That's I thought he was going to go up and dunk that. That was the intention originally. Noticed the two defenders and managed to keep a flick up. Oh boy, he's a, his shot's a bit off though. Uh, it doesn't seem to be hitting from the outside. A little bit rusty on the free throw line. I'm sure he'll get back in the gym and work on these free throws. No, that one wasn't even close. That right wrist is really bugging oh, him. Oh, good look off. up, Thorne. And there you go. Breaks out and scores. Good court vision right there to break off the missed free throw. Here's Lewis Caputo. That might be too much room for Lewis. Austin guards Carr. Carr wants to go left. Paradina. Wow! Knocks it down. Paradina knocks it down. Stolen by Carr. And that's a hoop. You can count that. High ball game. Momentum St. Mike's. And coach Shane James not happy with Sarindran not picking up the rock right there. Full timeout for Thorn Lee. 30 second timeout, that is. 43 43. And St. Mike's on a bit of a run. 103 left. Elias, what do you think about the run? We knew, you know, a team like St. Mike's would have it in them. Tying up the game now. 43 all with just over a minute left in the third quarter. Well, Nicolo Pardina, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast here, um, is always going to be a threat. Anytime he's, he's lined up anywhere on the perimeter, guys are looking for him. He's, he's the specialist. He's the guy who's going to catch and shoot and not think about it. Although he's missed two or three shots earlier, you know, in the first half, he's coming out, he stays confident, and he just lets it fly. And, you know, he, he is, I think, a, a pivotal piece in, in keeping them in games. Seems like the press, too, um, is, is giving, the St. Mike's press is giving Thornley a bit of a problem. They're kind of rushing the play. And that turnover, that last one, I don't think they wanted Sarindran to, to be dribbling the ball there. He couldn't pick it up. And Coach James is pointing out, when the ball's loose like that, just pick it up. Don't try to make a play out of it. Yeah, he was looking for him for the extra effort. I think Sarindran definitely hustled over, but he was looking for the extra effort for him to dive on the floor, get after it, you know, protect the ball. And it, it's on the guards at the same time to, to make sure that, you know, if Nurasen is gonna gonna get that ball, we got to be quick to get to him so that you know someone can handle it. This tournament has been tremendous so far, and some upsets, of course. But hey, this final—you couldn't ask for a better final. Okay, Thornley with the inbounds, full court press, surrendering back to Lewis, back to Austin. Is he gonna drive? He takes on Danilo Jurisic. He challenged him right now, Lewis. Sets up for the three, and he's got it! That's a big three! What a tremendous stroke he has there in perfect form. Rises up Jayden, and scores Jayden it. Jaden Lewis has been spectacular. And we're watching his stock rise slowly. And here's Carr with the fake and drives left. Can't get it to go. No good, but he goes after his... Swings it. Caputo fakes the three. Jurisic, no good. And over the back. 
you got to like the shot. I mean, it's there. It's a wide open shot. He's got to take it, just not hitting it right now. Maybe he'd be best advised to pull it in a little bit because his three doesn't seem to be going down. Some nights they're falling, some nights they're not. Not a big deal. Just got to find a way to get it into the basket. Austin, pull up Jay off the glass. No good. Look at the handles here. Crafty dribbler. Nelson Caputo. Marcus Carr, pull up three. In and out. Sarindran, rebound. Again, he's got to look for his guards here. And Three he's got to make sure they come to him. Oh, and he doesn't get it to go. And one more quarter left in the championship game. 46-43. Thornley leads it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're watching the webcast of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Classic. One more frame to go. One more frame to go in the final of the 2014 Father Henry Carr Classic. It's Thorn Lee with the 46-43 lead. Oh, and St. Felix, such a crafty slasher, gets it to go. It's a 48-43 lead for Thorn Lee. Let's see what St. Mike's has up their sleeve. One more quarter to go. It's standing room only here in the northwest end of Toronto in the Henry Carr Gymnasium. And speaking of cars, there's Marcus trying to get to the basket. Paradina up top. No good. Ooh. Oh, St. Felix with the reach in. And he's going hard. St. Felix, oh, almost gets the goal. Strong take there by St. Felix. Very heady point guard. You know, knows, see, what I like about him is he knows when to push, knows when to slow it down. In that scenario there, saw one defender in front of him, Made sure I'm going to take this guy all the way to the rim, hope for the foul, and that's exactly what happened. Almost a three-point play there for him. And you know what? He kind of sold it. When he went in and he got hit, he made sure the referees by going, ah, so the referees could say, hey, we got to make a call here. We got to, there's something that happened. He wasn't leaving it up to chance there for the referees. But strong drive. We saw the play before. He did the same thing, went coast to coast and scored. It's 48-43, 7-12 left in the fourth quarter of the championship game. And he misses the first one. And Coach Shane James says to his team, we got to keep putting points on the board. You can't relax here, especially against a, you know, kick and shoot team like St. Mike's who are drawing kick yep. it for threes. There comes Carr after the big rebound off the miss by Jurisic. He gets that rebound, gives it to Carr. Here's Lewis, Caputo, Carr. Oh, and he drives. And again, Ala James Harden, he just really knows how to get to the basket. Uses a little bit crafty moves, little crab dribble, little you know hesitation, and gets to the rim at will. Here he is at the line. Carr hits the free throw. It's a four-point lead. 
one thing I think that's really helped his, uh, helped his game come a long way. Uh, during the summer, I saw him working uh, with some weighted balls, um, you know, 10 pound, 10 pound balls, seven pound balls. And it, it helped him really absorb contact and, you know, fight through a hold and, and manage to try to get a three point play up. And that's, it's translating here right away. Yeah, he's, he's getting stronger. I mean, again, uh, guy that's really young, but, uh, you know, he's going to have a bright future being only in grade 10. Oh, and a turnover almost by Thorne Lee. And they're lucky as St. Felix picks it up. Such a good ball handler. To Lewis down low, and he doesn't pass it. I thought he could have passed it off to Thorne right there for the was open a, jump shot. That was a good-looking shot. Good-looking shot, just rattled out. I think that was the second shot he's missed all day, to be honest. Yeah, he's been uh, pretty much on fire. Again, we have 6.48 left in the game, 48-45. Unfortunately for them, they foul number 44, Abby Wright. Jamal Abby Wright will go to the line. And when you're up three points, you don't want to put St. Mike's at the line unnecessarily if you're Thorn Lee. Abby Wright misses it, but Caputo in there causing trouble. Abby Wright picks it up. Julian Grant, great jump shot. And that's a poor job of boxing out there by Thorne Lee to have a Caputo, a point guard, make a tip on the play and get it yep. back to his teammate. Here comes Lewis defended by Carr. St. Felix defended by Caputo. Surrendren looking inside for Lewis against Jurisic. Thorn, pull up, no good. Big rebound by Jaden Lewis. Lewis. Austin and he walks. Shoot the ball. You got it wide open, shoot the ball. All right, here we go. Caputo, defended by Lewis, who's playing special. Inside, Durisic, Surrendrin. Oh, my. Dino, so good on that play. Sized his man down, got in as deep as he could, and kiss off the glass. A lot of talent still left here in Canada. It hasn't all gone to the States. I got to give it up to the referees. This has been a very well refereed game. Yeah, they're letting guys play. You know, they see that there's a little physicality, but not overblowing on the whistles, which is good. It's a perfect. Got to go to the hoop strong, and he gets stapled by Danilo. In my estimation, that is your defensive player of the tournament right there. Most Danilo definitely. Danilo Juricic. I'm counting about 20 blocks at minimum in this tournament for <laughs> Danilo. Well, he's. Julian Grant. We know for sure he's at at least four, four per game. Julian Grant, this is a crucial time for Thor Lee right here. Aye, good move. Surrendering, can't get the goal. Danilo, rebound. And Thor Lee has to be careful. Carr gets it to go. Shell shock right now, a bit frazzled. They've got to remain composed. They're down seven after being up about five. That's a 12 point swing. And the defense right now, that looked like a sure bucket by Surendran and out of nowhere comes Danilo Juricic. Let's see what Thorn Lee has in store. See if they can come back. We'll be right back. My name is Drew Banks alongside Elliot Spiet. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. And we'll be right back right after this short break. Please stay tuned. Five minutes and nine seconds left in the game. Five minutes and eight seconds left in the gold medal game here at the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. 
St. Mike's has come back to take a seven nowhere. And Thorne Lee's confused right now. They can't get into their offense. Here's Jaden Lewis on the drive, and he's fouled by Julian Look at the Julian strength Grant. of Jaden Lewis. Getting two defenders, two St. Mike's jerseys. One of them hitting the ground, the other one hitting the, the back wall there. He looks like a football player, never mind Julian Grant. And he's at the line, hits one. And for Thorne Lee, Elias, I know that they gave up a, a little bit of a lead, but they can't look at it right now. They have to play every possession and take care of the rock and do the right things on both offense and defense. 55-50, St. Mike's with the lead. Looks like they will probably try to slow things down. Jaden Lewis on Caputo. High screen by Jurisic. Caputo drives, tries to flip it back, and there's McIntosh with the steal. Not a good play by Caputo. I'll take Probably the only time we've seen him make a poor decision this game. You know what? I'll take that foul for Marcus Carr there, making sure he doesn't get, making sure McIntosh doesn't get an easy two. Both teams are in the bonus as well, so they have to be cognizant going to the hoop, being aggressive in order to get to the free throw line. Here's McIntosh. No good. Surrendered, rebounds. Back to St. Felix. St. Felix has it. Kicks it to Lewis. Lewis swipes through. Caputo guarding him. Don't want to do too much. Here's Brassad. And a travel. It's a good call right there. Here comes Caputo. Caputo with it. Guarded by Lewis, Marcus Carr, guarded by McIntosh. The spacing right now on the floor for St. Mike's. All guys in corners, really opening up the floor here. No shot clock, remember. Look for penetration here by, by Marcus Carr. Caputo. Caputo drives but doesn't go to the hoop. Oh, he's dead, it's dead, it's dead. This is where they gotta get an opportunity. Timeout called. St. Mike's getting a little nervous there. Definitely wanna see a shot clock implemented in high school basketball. For those of you watching from the Federations of Canada, please, let's get the shot clock in here in Ontario. We need to get it done. Definitely makes games more interesting here, but we don't wanna see you know, one team holding out for the for the rest of the game. You got three three and a half minutes here, and don't want to see the ball being held. That's for sure. This has been a fantastic tournament, as usual. Three days. We've been here since Thursday. I'm losing a bit of my voice right now, but it's all worth it just to see the atmosphere in this gym is incredible. No one's leaving. No one has left the gym, Elias, for this final, despite the fact that the home team has not made the final for probably one of the fewer times in hi recent history. Well, you know, I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of these type of atmospheres as, as the season goes along. I think the entire country has really given in to the, the my north, you know, sort of mentality. We the north, my north, yes. It's been great to see, that's for sure. And it keeps growing every year. The tournaments get bigger. I'm sure Humber College, their stands fit about a thousand people. Pretty sure that's going to be filled up. Maybe standing room only there as well. Especially after the results of some teams that did not have results that they'd like. They're going to be working hard this week, getting back to the drawing board. They want to be in this position because, you know, you have all the scouts and coaches and teams looking at them right now. Right. Back to the action. 55 53 39 left in the game. Carr with it up top, guarded by McIntosh. Jaden Lewis guarding Caputo. Jurisic back to Caputo and off Caputo's foot. A very rare turnover here by Caputo. Marcus Carr giving him a high five, telling him, don't worry about it, let's get it back. And that's the kind of break that Thornley needs right now, down five with three minutes and 20 seconds left. Jaden Lewis, double team, Julian Grant. Julian Grant, double team, Lewis, nice take, and he gets it. And it looks like he called a charge.
referee I don't calls a charge on that. I'm gonna have to disagree with that I'm one too. I'm not sure, I think he was moving. Defender was definitely moving back. I don't like that call, I like to let him play. Let him score, if you're not gonna give him the foul, let him play, but there's Carr behind the back, almost turns it over. Paradina in the corner, Caputo, pull up, Caputo! 57-50, 46 left. Here comes McIntosh, drives, and he, he puts so much pressure on the defense. He knows exactly when to stop the momentum of the crowd as well. And it stops the clock with 241, down seven points. Unfortunate break for Thorn Lee on that last drive by Lewis. It looked like it was a, char a block, but referee saw it as a charge. That would have been a big three-point play if it went their way. And Thorn Lee will look to get to the line here as much as possible. You want to be able to stop the clock, you know, gain gain in on this um, on this St. Mike's lead before you know you're risking shots from the perimeter. Here's his second free throw. He missed the first, missed two. They're lucky they pick it up. St. Felix doesn't want the three. Paradina tries to get it from him. Drives on Carr. Carr cuts him off. Good defense by Carr. And Nelson Caputo matching up here with Jaden Lewis, the other high scorer in the game. Five second call. Crucial five second call. And here St. Mike's Paradina to throw it in. Julian Grant comes over. Caputo right there. Caputo brings it in. Thornley might have to go to a full court press right here on all guys to try to get a turnover. Here's Carr, excellent ball handler. Either way, left or right. They're gonna milk the clock a bit. Here's Caputo, kicks it back out to Carr. Back to Caputo, up top. To Juricic for three. Make it? No, not this time. And Julian Grant, that might be it. That might be the game saver. That might be the game saver right there. Caputo, oh, can't finish. And Julian another Grant one for Julian. Felix. Jaden Lewis, no good. Not a good shot. You want to get something going to the basket right now. Thought he had Brandon Prasad there. And here is Marcus Carr, 57-50, 128 left. Carr with the drive, and he's fouled by McIntosh. And that Julian Grant might have been the dagger right there. You cannot give up an offensive rebound if you're trying to get back from a seven-point deficit. 57-50 is the score. Marcus Carr at the line. Carr makes it. Makes the first one, 58-50. Second one is up, and it's off. Another rebound missed. Not a good box out there, not a strong rebound. They get it back, Carr misses, gets his own rebound. And that's going to pretty much, more than likely, ice it for St. Mike's. Here's Carr again. One of the hoop changes hands. That is James Harden Jr. The man without the beard right there can get to the hoop at any time. Marcus Carr. And there's a turnover. And that's gonna that's gonna do it, I think. St. Mike's is gonna capture the 2014 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Classic. Marcus Carr pulls it back out. 44 seconds left. Jaden Lewis swings it to Julian Grant, back to Caputo. I think you got to try to foul here, stop the clock. Try to foul, stop the clock, you never know. Come down and make a couple threes. They let too much time go off the clock there, Elias, in my opinion. And the Blue Raiders here, out here on the floor celebrating. Pardon me? Blue Raiders out here celebrating a little early. Still a lot of time here. 30 seconds left. You never know what can happen. Just duck. Just duck. And he makes the free throw. 
29.3 seconds left. 62-50. And St. Felix goes and gets fouled. St. Felix gets fouled. Here is St. Felix. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget you can catch us next weekend at the Hubbard Classic. St. Felix. Oh, Got to make your free throws if you want to try to cut this deficit. 12 points. <laughs> Looks like it's pretty much done right now. 23.7 seconds left. It would take way more than a miracle for Thorne Lee to get this one. And there's a, a foul on Black 30, Surendran, and St. Mike's is going to go to the free throw line and pretty much wrap this one up. 23.2 seconds left. Elias, it's been a great tournament. Your thoughts overall on the play that you've seen at such an early event in this school year? I mean, this really shakes things up on the national rankings. Uh, for those who haven't seen them, log on to NorthPoleHoops.com. On the homepage there, you'll find uh, NPH's national rankings. This really shakes things up, though. Um, Father Henry Carr took a, you know, took a, 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 bad, a bad loss early in the tournament. St. Mary's number one fell 0-2. Um, St. Mike's right now, to be honest with you, is looking like the number one team in the country. Well, they're looking good. And when you've got a guy like Caputo and you've got Marcus Harden Carr getting to the basket, Jurisic blocking everything in sight. You have a good team, that's for sure. And there you have it, the final. 62-50. St. Mike's takes the 2014 Father Henry Carr Classic. Stay tuned for the awards presentation. And as well, we hope to get an interview with a player from the winning squad. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>